Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. We here. We're alive. We're underground. Not yet. Sort of, kind of. Not yet. We're heading. You are. You are heading towards the underground. We're going down. As of down. Our, uh, as of what's happened, uh, you found out that there is someone who might know where your uh, day sun is. Uh, but Day unfortunately, <coughs> Daystar, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, oh, someone's keeping up the track, thank God it's not Someone me, though. Someone has to. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Al. Uh, <clears throat> you did a little bit of uh, sightseeing and some uh, digging around town <coughs> in uh, Gulliver, which is the town mm-hmm. of where all the dwarves are hanging out. We met a snail boy. Yep, you met a snail boy who, uh, not, you know, not really a snail, more of a sea slug lad. Who, uh... Gary! <laughs> I'm sorry. Just leaves a slimy trail behind. <laughs> I taught him about wax. Yeah. You uh, galaxy brain that boy. Yeah, you galaxy brained him super hard because apparently his dad, who is the uh, grand pseudo of the entire colony of those uh, sea malu, uh, is, is a very overprotective fella. So uh, he, his father apparently is the only person who knows about the, the day star. Mm-hmm. So he invited you all to head on into the Underdark and uh, find out where his city is, and he could take you to the Grand Library to meet his father. Cool. While doing so, uh, you discovered that there's also someone who can guide you into the Underdark, and that fella is, and unfortunately, I made a very big mistake in calling him, but I like this name better. We are now going to call him Devil Grin. It used to be Devil Growl. Uh, Devil Grin looks like a very disheveled, if not very ugly and very scarred, uh... <clears throat> dragon or red scale dragonborn, but apparently he calls himself as a uh, Drakai, and no one here knows what the fuck that is. So unless you want to poke and prod him when uh, the next day, that's pretty much what will happen there. Wake's right. just assuming he's a really ugly dragonborn, and that's just what he wanted to call himself to make himself feel better. That's pretty fair. Uh, so at this point, Micha and uh, Valtara pretty much went off to find any other supplies. They meet you back at the inn. Uh, it's still the night of, it's not the day before, because mm-hmm. that's when you're going to meet Devil Grin. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, allergies. Hey man, I, I've been there. It's that season. Mm-hmm. So, uh, with that, let me check my notes, so I'm not going to get this all Tom fuckered. The worst kind of fuckered. So, who here has dark vision of the party? I do. I was about to say, I hope the warden does. Mecha does. <laughs> I've hope, got torches. I hope the mushroom who <laughs> lives in dark, dank places knows how to see in the dark. So unfortunately, that means a good half of the party does not have dark vision. So luckily, they went out and bought torches and lanterns. So there, for those who don't want to walk around in the darkness or, you know, can't see, uh, Micha had purchased lanterns for all of you, mm-hmm. which means that you now have a 60... Uh, 60 radius of uh, light. And also, should those go out, Micha and Valtara have also purchased three scrolls of the cantrip light. Hmm. Nice. Technically, Wake does have control flame, so he can just, like, hold a ball of fire as a torch. But that would probably only, like, go 10. Yeah. These lanterns but... they bought go 60. Sorry, I don't have technology built into my hands. That was really Mr. Satan right there. <laughs> yeah, I was just yeah. like, wait a minute. What oh, it's just a bunch of tricks! <laughs> Magic doesn't exist, Jimmy. It's a series of mirrors and light. <laughs> just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. And actually, no, that's about <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Roughly. Hmm. So we have torches. They have, they have, have uh, each. Everyone has one torch, even though for those who don't technically need it. Okay. Yeah. So, I will uh, have a torch <clears throat> in my inventory. So I'll add one additional torch to my inventory. Yep. Then. For those who don't have dark vision, you will also have a 60-foot light radius lantern that is attached onto your person. Is it a hooded lantern, like a bullseye lantern, or is it just like a... It's literally just like a regular holdout lantern. Okay. It's not It's not hooded. So unfortunately, that's all they could purchase at the time. There was none that uh, had anything to do with like water or whatnot. Mm. So Hey, it's more than we got. Mm, yeah. The Scooby-Doo approach. Like zoinks. And now I actually have something to use my lantern oil on that isn't just setting things on fire. <laughs> so uh, with that, unless there's anything else you guys want to do, you all pretty much reconvene at night. Uh, you are still over at the inn. Uh, you will meet up with Devil Grin on the uh, 
at the docks, mm -hmm. where you will actually be heading south of the city and going along the mountain pass to reach the mouth of Underhollum. So with that, it's pretty much the night of the night before. You're all at the bar. If there's anything else you want to do, now is the time to make preparations. Uh, only thing I can think of is I want to use uh, bits and pieces of my climber's kit to kind of make a holster for the lantern so they can kind of hang at my belt. Okay, that's fair. Roll a survival check. It won't be terribly horrible to pass this. Yeah, that is a uh, 17. Yeah, you're fine. You you take some of the, the pistons and some of the uh, belts and loop it around uh, your waist to make a makeshift belt to hold the lantern on. All right. Uh, so at, at, your, at, at your center, so basically at your square is where the light will make. All right, Zito, I don't know how possible this would be because I don't know Cro uh, Chroma Gill's physiology quite as well as I would like. Uh, since I have a soft, spongy, mushroomy body that seems to be somewhat regenerative, with my torch, could I just kind of like embed that in my shoulder or something so I have free hands despite not having a lantern? What's really sad is I saw that coming a mile away. And I'd also it. be fine embedding it in my colorful cap and making <laughs> a cool light show, the maybe. The beacon is lit! <laughs> now all of China knows you're here. <laughs> just here's the thing. I'm the tallest motherfucker in this crew, and it's going to be really easy to spot me if I've also got a big light on my head. Do but I'd like uh, to be able to use two hands, since that's most of my weapon. You have I, I, don't, I also don't know if we've ever established this. Are those little frills under your cap bioluminescent? Yes. Oh, wow. So they, little, do, yeah. they do give off a mild glow. It's like a little mini sun just yep. walking in the underdark. Also, with my myconid magic, naturally, whenever I cast uh, any sort of spell, I dimly glow blue for twenty for, in a 25-foot radius. Ooh. So Pretty. you do have a light source. Yes. But that does mean you have to cast magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, as for the torch thing, you pretty much... So you're asking me this. You're pretty much asking Mitya to do some operation on your shoulder. I just want this... I would like for this to be stable in either a... a some sort of high up spot, but where it won't be dangerous to burn me when it's lit. So I thought maybe the shoulder, but that might be too close to my head. My my cap is a little sensitive, so I don't know if that's where I want us to be digging into. But I was just wondering if this would be possible. I'm going I did, you, to... just, you just sit, you just watch as Mitya is holding a draft of beer as you're asking this to her. You know I'm a shrink, right? That's kind of doctor, isn't it? I understood that doctors were the ones I went to with medical needs. She just, like, takes the draft. All right, fuck it, let's do this. Okay. She's gonna roll medical. Roll me a survival on your end. <laughs> Can I survive her medical? Can you survive the procedure? I have lots of fishing line if you need to use, if you need sutures. She does have a healing kit, so this will act as okay, that. Okay, cool. Uh, modified 20 for my survival. Nice. It's funny, I have... A fishing tackle, like a fishing She has set, but... no fucking earthly idea how this works, oh, but, the, no. but the fact that you rolled that, oh, okay. you pretty, like, it takes her, like, three attempts to do exactly what you want, so you're missing, like, a good chunk of your shoulder shoulder flesh on the floor. Okay. But I don't need that. Little, but... little rats are walking up and just eating it. So, with that, she finally just gives up on the final attempt. She just looks at the side of your arm, takes a nice chunk out of the pivot of your bicep, and it's in there. Uh, hey, this seems like a... Thank you, Mitra. This is exactly what I wanted. I'll have another one, please. Wake's just staring on in horror. <laughs> <laughs> kind of moves his arm to see if it loses stability or so, anything. Or... It's so, so think the fucking torch, the prosthetic torch in Sekiro. Okay, I'm into that. <laughs> kind of sticks out the back <laughs> of your elbow there. Yep. Who right. was there? Don't worry, I have a light. <laughs> Listen, we got ways to make you talk. Or my favorite. Stop right there, criminal scum. <laughs> a classic. Morgan, uh, do you have anything you wish to do before we prep? So you got the torch, got the lantern. Got that, got that. Oh, I definitely used that. I think I should be good. All right, Rad. Some old items managed to make it onto my inventory list since mm -hmm. this is from an old character sheet that I remodded. I'm like, when did I get a potion of invisibility? Oh, right, I used that on Pops Robbie. <laughs> yep. So, with all this, everyone goes ahead and goes to sleep. You get a nice full day's rest. And you meet up with Devil Grin around 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Devil Grin, who last you saw him, he wasn't like wear really wearing anything. He had like a pair of pants and like just like a dock shirt. Uh, this time around, he comes to you. He's wearing scale mail that 
covers most of his chest, and then droops down with a little bit of a drape, uh, a little bit of a drapery. Mm. So he's got a little bit of like a scale mail into robe thing going on, and he's got his katana visibly showing on the side. You uh, look prepared for travel. Oh, this is quite common. I'm uh, going into the Underdark's not really something I would like to do often, but I have ways to get around, which a way I'd uh, I'd like to show you before we actually delve in. So when we get to the mouth of the cave, I'll show you what I mean. Say, uh, Devil Grin, I'm not sure how long this uh, journey of ours is going to take, but that's a, that's a fancy looking sword you have there. I only about a half a day's travel, but it is the Underdark. It's never, it's always foolish to go unprepared. Yeah, I was actually wondering, um, <clears throat> I kind of impulse bought a sword kind of like that, and I kind of show him ghoul at my side. I have no earthly idea how to wield it. Oh, would you rather trade for it then? Well, either that or you could maybe teach me a thing or two. Basically, I'm trying to get proficiency in using this exotic weapon. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's not actually an exotic weapon. It's it's a mar it's a martial it, weapon though. Treated as I a martial. Not, yeah, which I do not have uh, exactly. proficiency in. Uh, this is not something he could teach you right off on a whim. Yeah. But uh, when you have time, if you would like, uh, when, when there's periods of long rest or there's a lull in activity, that's a perfect time to do that, and yeah. that will take rolls. Yeah, I'm just I'm taking I'm I'm beginning the process <laughs> so that I can use this weapon that I bought. Hmm. He like looks he looks over you and he looks over at the sword. Well, you have the physical make to actually be able to capably wield one, which is a very good start. Most people who would ask me something like this are normally a little weak and inferior. Yeah, it just doesn't really fit with my style. It's a little too front heavy and everything I use, I kind of like pull out my spear, just spin it around, do a whole bunch of quick flourishes. Well, you are dexterous enough to do, to wield it. I will tell you this though. It will take time and being I am what I am, and most of what I do on my adventures, walking back and forth from the Underdark, it won't come cheap. Maybe like 50 bucks to start. Seems fair. I toss him uh, 25 gold. Excellent. When, uh, we have a, when we have a chance to take a break, I know there's a, uh, there's a small farming section near a couple of bioluminescent mushrooms just on our way over to the city. We can probably stop there. Works for me. All right. Well, uh... I believe all of you are well equipped. Is there anything else you would care to know or wish to ask me before we take this venture? You've met the Funglets, haven't you? <laughs> I, would, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> meet the Funglets this Thursday on TFS. <laughs> um, I've encountered them once before. I've seen them uh, meander on the road, and I know some of their young try to take their ways into farmlands. We... Where I came from, we hadn't met very many funglets, and most of my life I had been s spent being told that they were they were an ill sort and a and a group that would that would defile our circle if we were to let them come in. Mm, kind of sounds like my people with the dragonborn. Very possible. I just wanted to be sure. It, do they have similar feelings towards me? If I if I appro appro approach them without any sort of ill will or ill intentions, will I still be in any sort of danger? Is this a do you have any idea if they dislike other kinds of mushrooms as well? I wouldn't know anything about other mushrooms. I know that they're a little indifferent towards other people, but if you're very foolish about entering their territory and making havoc about the place, I'm sure they're going to attack you on sight. All right, then perhaps I'll just do my best to avoid any sort of situation where it may get uncomfortable. <clears throat> Well, I mean, considering your stock and your size, most of the funglets I've ever seen are really tall and lanky. You look like you could snap one in half. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have I done? You, pour, you poured kerosene on that fire. Yeah, did, That's what you did. So, by the way, uh, now that you all have a better chance to look at Devil Grin's face, it looks like something raked the side of his face enough that, like... So, you know, the fucking... You want to know how I got these scars? Yeah. That, except it's open. Okay. So, like... It's exposing the whole inside of his chin. Okay, so, like, Dark Knight's Two-Face, where there's nothing. You yep. just see raw skull and teeth. Yep, or for that... those that have seen the latest release of Baki on Netflix, it's <laughs> that one dude the guy's face shot in. Okay. That's right over my head, unfortunately. Don't worry, the show's super extra, and it's actually really bad, but I love it. <laughs> we all have our guilty pleasures. Yup. All right. So, uh... 
Now that you, you all can, like, see that, his fangs are drooping down. This guy looks like... And there's actually, uh, Chromagill. Uh, I need you to roll me a nature check for me. Uh, 18. Cool. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Uh, you're not incredibly knowledgeable about, like, dragonborn physiology, but you do know that they have the capability of, like, there's a, a biogenetic pouch that, like, is where most of their natural breath weaponry is stored. Mm -hmm. It's, like, right in between where the rib cage is, like, just in front of it. He has the beginnings of what the gland is for someone who would have a fire breath attack is just barely visibly showing where the scarring ends. Uh, Devilgrin, I, I, I have a question. I haven't met many of your, of your kind where I come from. That'd be unsurprising, considering. You, you can attack with your breath, right? Is that, a, is that a power you have? He, like, kind of, like, traces his shit. Oh, you've noticed, then. Yes, my kind have what the Dragonborn have when it comes to breath weaponry. Mine is based in fire. With the with the injury to your to your cheek, does the, are you still able to to control which way the fire goes, or has it? Oh, of course, of okay. course. I just wanted to be. I'm very scared of fire, and I don't want that anywhere near me if uh, if it goes awry. Oh no, this uh, my ability to use fire predates this injury, but I assure you, even with this injury, I am in much control of my fire. Excellent. All right. Thank thank you so much. And sorry if that wasn't. Inappropriate question. It's sometimes it can just make me a little. Oh paranoid. no! This is actually one of the more common features people ask of me. He like kind of like pats through his. He pats on the side of his bot on the side of the scarring, and like he like traces his finger over his teeth. You can't tell if he's actually grinning at you now or if he's actually like just. just it's just the really injury. Really showing the scar. It, it's very. If you look at him at a certain side, it's almost impossible to tell if it's like the injury is just that or he's actually conveying uh, a grin. Hmm. So with that, you got, if there's nothing else anyone else wants to do at this point, uh, you guys have about a half a day's travel, which maybe an hour or two will be just leaving the city. Uh, you leave near the docks of Gulliver. You see your ship just off on the distance. Uh, you will, unfortunately, like the, he just realizes, oh, Devilgorn kind of like snaps his fingers. Oh, you are going to pay the docking fee, yes? If that is your ship. Uh, how much would that be? Oh, Sorry, nobody, nobody uh, told oh, us. Oh, no, no. That's, that's, that's no problem. They normally will dock your boat for a week for 15 gold. Done. Sounds reasonable. So if you pay 30, you have two weeks of uh, a parking spot. We'll start with 15. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So you, you can pay make it back. Yeah, you, you, pay, the, you pay the folks. I'll, make, I'll make it back before the meter expires. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like there's Wake running from all the dangers in the in the fucking. Uh, Don't take it! Don't take it! I'm here! <laughs> just I'm here! Just holding up the coin. Wait! As fuck it. As the waitress was late with my check. <laughs> <laughs> as fucking like under dark horrors are chasing after him out of the cave. Traffic was terrible. Let us Pay on the, the boat. Okay. <laughs> I'll run back to fight them. <laughs> and I just throw it at the meter mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, here's another one. All right, we have these little blue pyramids. Now, if you just stay right here, if our ticker goes down, <laughs> we'll be here. Actually, I, I I was thinking about that the other day, and that was with the crew that's dead. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, Whoops. yes. Yeah, unfortunately, that I think that uh, really good artifact might not be in our possession anymore. Nah. But if it's strong enough, maybe it was not destroyed and mm -hmm. somehow recoverable. Yeah, we'll find out. Scaffy lived. Scaffy lived. Yeah. And he fell forever. <laughs> I don't, and here's the thing, I will say this for all the people who are like telling me that's hypocritical of me. I don't count Scaffy as a character, I count him as an item. <laughs> it's true. I have him in my inventory. Yeah. He Technically, an he's an undead hand, so he he's has been familiar dead this whole best. time. Yep, exactly. He acts so, as a familiar. Yeah, and that would be like his highest ranking as a category. <laughs> a one action familiar. I... <laughs> Look, man, I got it from a skeleton in a cloak. I'm not going to ask questions. <laughs> You know a guy. <laughs> yeah, you know a guy. <laughs> Sometimes liches give gifts. That's what Christmas is all Sometimes about. Sometimes liches be bitches and I they hand you for a that. hand. God, I'm like having like man, Nostradamus man, moments. Man, today. listen here. I'm still of the firm believer, and apparently there's a bunch of other people who have taken into this idea that uh, uh, lichdom is a profession, not a morality choice. <laughs> it's it's a living. I mean, it. You have to have a certain level of morality about you in order to go through the process of becoming one, but mm. 
Yeah, that's just that just what, changes the way you see life and death, basically. Yeah, why, why would that change your actions as a yeah. person? I just see it as a career prerequisite. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so with that, you guys leave uh, leave the city of Gulliver. Uh, you are now walking alongside the... Pretty much it's like a really long and winding road that goes along the base of the mountain. You guys now, like... Remember how you guys came in from the, uh, from the south heading up north? Yep. Uh, you are now starting to, like, walk up the side... The cliffside where that sort of road is disappearing into the, into the dips of the trees. Uh, so if you were to look over on the side of you, you're just now entering a little bit of a forest... And then just beyond that forest, maybe like 10, 15 uh, feet away from the road you're on, is that drop, that flat surface drop. Mm. Try to avoid that. Yep. There's not a lot of uh, wiggle room for you guys on the other side of you, however. It, once again, kind of transforms into that flat uh, siding. So it's like a little bit of forest and then the flat wall and then a little bit of forest and it keeps walling upwards. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> So, I need everyone to roll me a survival check as you're walking uphill on an incline. Oh, boy. 22. 24. Is it survival? Yep. A four. Devil Grin gets a, yeah, well, with a fucking wisdom check with that and with a proficiency in survival, he gets a 25. Uh, Micha. Micha's a little haggard, but she's holding her own. Valtara. She's ahead of everyone. She's taking it like a champ. She's mm. just like fucking. She's uphill, taking her walking stick, just going. All right. She's sprinting, just uh, 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 does a lap back. You guys are slow. <laughs> she's got those like runners posts. To, yeah, like... pretty much. <laughs> she, she she acts like she's done this before on countless occasions. Well, she is a uh, nature to... expert. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although I rolled a four, so. Uh Oh, you rolled a four. Yeah, that's why. I was like, uh, I'm waiting for it. Unfortunately, that's a point of exhaustion on that's you. That's fair. <clears throat> As uh, the, the mountain air is a little too rough for good old Morgan. I mean, I only have one functioning lung, so. <laughs> Jeez, Morgan, you gotta breathe in. Morgan, you gotta breathe in. Shut up. <laughs> now, son, see... You're supposed to bend with your legs. Take deep breaths, Morgan. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he says that with the fullest sarcasm. <laughs> Please don't give me any VO directions right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just being an asshole. <laughs> uh, I love you, booby. Yeah. Uh, so with that, you guys pretty much spend like the next hour going uphill. Uh, Chromagill... There are a couple of monkeys sitting in the tree watching you guys. They, uh, they, they don't look like they're giving you too much mind, but considering the makeup of your party, you kind of all look very interesting. One of them actually is holding onto a small pouch and is nibbling on it. Like, one of the young is holding onto the pouch and nibbling on it. Chromagill doesn't really do much. He just looks... Looks at the creatures above him, not really giving them any sort of indication or invitation. <laughs> strange land, strange creatures. Not gonna, not gonna bother them. <laughs> Way to be a cons uh, conservationist. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, in everyone, the canopy. Yep. Everyone, uh, give me a perception check since Chromagill's yeah, gonna remain silent. All right. There we go. Modify twenty. Uh, perception. That is a seventeen. Mm -hmm. Oh, perception. Sorry, that's a seventeen as well. 17 and what? Again? 17. 17? Ah, oh, yeah. both of you. Okay. Let me uh, roll for... I was going to say, if Wake did notice the monkeys and they didn't have anything interesting, uh, I have plenty of rations, so he has no reason to hunt them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you all see the monkeys, but no problem. It's just that uh, everyone except for Valtara, Chromagill, and, uh, and Devil Grin noticed that it's actually holding something. Like, it looks like a very nice, uh, well-crafted pouch. And the seaming of it is covered in gemstones. Hmm. 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 Uh, uh, I will say this. It's uh, one very large monkey, probably about up to your waist, Wake. Okay. So and like the, I'm a and cat. the young, yeah, and the young are probably about up to your kneecap. And there's three of them, three young. All right. And one of the young ones is holding the bag. Yes. Uh, how high up in the trees are they? Or are they just kind of off on the side on these rocks? 
Uh, some of them are off on the side. The one who has the pouch is about 15 feet up the tree. All right. You know, I have proficiency in this, so I may as well try. I'm going to start climbing the tree, and with animal handling, I'm going to try to convince this thing that I'm its friend. Uh, survival check first to get up the tree. Actually, no athletics. I apologize. That is that is a strength check. Sure thing. By the way, I'm a monk. Hosting thy weight. Uh, that is a twin... Modified 20. Modified 20. Yeah, you get up the tree with no problem. Devil Grin now just turns and looks at you as, like, this is a little bit of a pit stop for everyone. Yeah, I'm just uh, very calmly and coolly like, hey, little guy, because my island had monkeys, and I'm familiar with them. I'm just trying to nice and... Oh, fuck, that's a natural 20 on that animal handling. All right, well, the monkey's not afraid of you. It's still just sitting there biting on the... Uh... You, you approach it in a way that the, the mother and the other kids are not, like... Like, threatened. afraid. They're not frightened of the situation. Uh, you are, like, you climb up the tree enough that you're kind of, like, hanging off the side of the tree and holding onto the branch, and the monkey's, like, sitting off on the side. Yeah. Um, is this tree a fruit-bearing tree in any way? No, it's like a pine tree. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Wake does not carry many fruit on him. So, uh, at this point, uh... Can I coerce that na uh, animal handling check into a uh, sleight of hand where I'm just going to kind of yank this thing away or like uh, sort of slowly kind of like grab it and just be like, hey, can I, can, I, can I have that? Well, you're up close to it. It's not angry with you right now. So if you want to do the sleight of hand, I'll allow it, but that would have to be a roll. All right, sleight of hand. Do-do-do. Because the creature is kind of, like, wrapping, wrapping its arms around the bag, and it's kind of, like, sitting in a fetal position with it sitting there. Trying to take this thing is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, uh, that's an 18 with the sleight of hand. An 18? Yeah, basically I'm trying to distract it with any number of things I could have. But the monkey like is uh, the monkey's a little frozen that this giant, what looks like fish man, is trying to reach for it. It kind of, like... There's a little bit of, like, tug as you're trying to grab the bag, but you slowly just, like, ebb it out from underneath him, and he's just kind of like, oh, man, oh, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it at my side, and I'm going to toss it one of these fey glass uh, marbles, one of those things that shatter and then reform. Okay. So it can have something to play with. He takes it. All of a sudden, the other monkeys, like, just come up the tree and are now fighting him for it. All right, have fun. Wee! <laughs> and I drop down. Uh, athletics or acrobatics of your choice? Uh, I'm just gonna use Monk's slow fall. Oh, fight. Right, right, right. Woof! A little gust of air catches me as I drop down in superhero pose. Okay, well, <laughs> now you now have the bag. The, the mother monkey is now at the base of the tree staring at you with a squinty eye. Shrug. Boys will be boys. It's and still staring. girls. It's still staring at you. What'd you find up there, Wake? A bag. Ooh, fancy bag. Uh, the gemstones are emerald. They are very well crafted. It. The only thing that's wrong with this bag is it has a little bit of... Monkey funk. Yeah, it's got monkey saliva on it. It's got a little bit of bite marks. Uh, however, at the rim of the bag where the seam is open and where uh, the seam opens to where the strap is to saddle it onto something, there's a little bit of dried blood. Mm. Well, that'll buff right out, probably. <laughs> um, I have absolutely no magical attunement, so I have no way of actually knowing if this bag is magic, but it seems like it might be. Is there something I could check on that? That would be an arcane check. All right. Can I help with that? Yes. Okay. I will take that advantage. Okay, so instead of a modified one that is going to be a 16. <laughs> okay, much better. Uh, this bag is not magically like sealed away, but there you've kind of like weighed in your hand. It has the makes of a bag of holding in some case, but it's way smaller. So it's probably about the quarter amount of weight and void space as a bag of holding. So like a, I mean, a, above game, a handy haversack. Yeah. Okay. It's like a sandwich bag of holding. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, uh, as we continue on, if this mama monkey isn't going to try to stop us in any she's way. She's still shape staring at you. Well, that is fine. If we are going to continue on our way and she's <laughs> not going to stop us, I'm just going to be digging through this bag to see if there's anything in it. All right. You open the bag. Yep. The inside of it is caked in blood. 
somebody jumped in here and that didn't go well. I just... Oh, boy. Out crumbles Swivelblin limbs. I didn't really want to... (laughs) I'll I'll be honest, I didn't really want to carry those around anyway. Oh, there are a couple more. Uh, Two arms come out. Uh, They all look like they've been ripped apart by some kind of blade, but then there's also what looks like... uh, I literally thought you were about to say, like, by some sort of ape. (laughs) (laughs) Torn to shreds by its primate prince. No, no, this, this, but there are, there are animalistic cuts in some of the uh, body parts, but you look back at the monkey who's still staring at you. It's a tiny little monkey. It's like, it's a pretty substantial monkey, but it doesn't look like this was done by like something that has opposable thumbs. Right, right. Uh, I just give it a thumbs up. Start brushing these limbs off the side of the cliff. You might as well flip it off at that point. <laughs> it doesn't know what I'm doing. I could, and it wouldn't matter. The monkey's matter. gone. Oh, all right. Well, uh, guess we'll carry on, and we'll wash this later. The monkey's a few feet ahead of you. Oh, hi. In the tree line. Reach up to my chest and start, like... Getting my fingers kind of close to daggers just in case I need to do anything. The monkey is not attacking you. It's just still sitting there staring at you. And now it's young. is kind of like chasing after the mother on the top of the tree. Is anybody else unnerved by this? I mean, it is strange that you would find an animal holding a bag full of body parts. I mean, would you believe me if I said this isn't the first time? Devil Grin rolls a survival check on the body parts. Wasn't technically a... Bag. It was a box, but he like he like holds up the bo- the wrist of the swivel limb by the uh, uh the ri- by the wrist. He holds the limb up, starts like tracing his finger over the cut. It was no monkey that did this. Tell me, do any of you know what a hook horror is? Is that a nature yeah, yeah, or a nature history? That's a history check with disadvantage because no one here has been to the Underdark. <laughs> Fuck your disadvantage. I got a 19 and a 20, so I'm going to know something. (laughs) I got a (laughs) 7. They are abominations that have the features of a bird, but also have the slashing limbs of a a scimitar. Oh, yes, those nightmarish things. What about them? This is the work of them. (laughs) I don't understand how they were neatly packed away. I don't believe these creatures have the intelligence to hide body parts of people inside bags of... Bags of holding. Have you heard of anybody that maybe rides one or tames them? That's impossible. That's like saying how you surface dwellers. What's those things called? Oh, yes, owl bears. That's like Oof. someone trying to corral an owl bear to their side. Damn fool. I've never seen one of those either. Mm. Mitya and Valtar just like all wince when they hear that. Ugh. So are they like bears that are owls or owls that are bears? Uh, they ha- you would actually know, oh, what? what no, I was just gonna do a, jo- a gag. Oh, you wanna do the gag? Go for it, and then I'll just... tell Chromagill what he's doing. Yes. Ah! Uh, Chromagill. Yes? You know that their physical makeup is more, like, something that would be akin to, like, the body of a turtle, but they have, like, the head of a vulture. Well, that I- sounds like nothing like either of those things. <laughs> Now, I know it's called an owl bear, but bear with me here. Oh, no, this is the hook horror. Oh, the hook horror, okay. Okay, I was going to say, this would be called vulture turtles. <laughs> no, the owl bear, you'd have to roll for that. You've never seen okay. those. No, this this creature is, it it has a, a protective body, but a long vulture-like neck and uh, mm. very dangerous blades and claws. It's a very scary creature. They can stand up to at least maybe two of you. Oh. That's right, it's very big. Morgan, can we go home? Mm-hmm. Well, the joke's on them. There are five of us. That is true. We would have the numbers advantage, and if it's a flying creature, it kind of looks around. We have the trees, but we're kind of going... We're on, like, a cliffside, so I assume there's plenty of space for us to see somewhere. Well, that's the thing. Like, like uh, Devil Grin's looking at, uh, looking at the body parts. This can only mean, like, the only thing I can deduce out of this is that the monkeys might have found this pouch near the mouth of the caves. Uh, hook horrors don't come out of the Underdark. Unless transported somehow. Mm. I mean, that makes sense. These are 
Like, and I look at the sickly pale skin on this stuff. Uh, you mentioned that they're swivel blend. I don't think Wade yeah. would necessarily know off the top of his head that that's what these are, but these guys definitely look like they haven't seen a lot of sun, so. Mm. The deep gnomes are not one for coming up to the surface. They're all about their gem casting. Maybe there was someone who was traveling between places and just happened to drop his bag or was accosted on his way and the monkeys got a hold of it. That does make sense. There are caravans that come out of the Underdark now and again to at least drop off some magical uh, gemstones to the town. But then why pack your bag full of limbs? Perhaps to make some sort of statement. This might be someone who goes around intimidating people or... <laughs> I mean, there uses... is a bit of a political struggle going on right now. Could be a serial killer. I never heard, uh, like, Devil Grin's kind of just, like, pondering that he, like, rubs his chin. Like, that sounds plausible, but so far, while the fights and all the raids and... Not the raids, I apologize. All the riots and all the protesting, they've never transformed into bloodshed. While we're talking, Wake's gonna go ahead and cut the, like, one finger off of each of the hands that we have. I still got that Meech, ring, motherfuckers. Me, me, <laughs> like, Meech now just like looks at you just like, okay, are you becoming a serial killer now? No, no, no. I just got a ring that eats fingers and shits keys. So you are a serial killer. Sure. Uh, but I'm also going to take a couple. <laughs> 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 that one just goes. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he has killed many people, and they normally have the common thing of trying to kill him. I guess that's a I serial I have made killer. a series of killing things, so <laughs> technically... Um, and I'm also going to repackage some of these limbs, thinking uh, Wake's gut instinct is telling him that these might have been used as bait for these creatures or some sort of food for them to stave them off. I need you to roll me a medical check to cut these fingers off properly. Okay. Uh, medical check, that is a 19. 19? Natural one. You keep hitting the knuckles. No, you cut them off at the base. You get them pretty Just much... Pop a knife in there. Poof. Yeah, you, you pretty much get them properly. I only need one finger per hand since that's how... Uh... I'm just picturing That's him. how good old Lancey works. Mm. I'm just picturing him chopping those hands like how you chop an onion. like Just like that. <laughs> you see, as somebody that likes to butcher his own meat, you find the joint, you pop, and poof, you just, just go. Uh, Valtara looks off to the side. Um, the monkey's no longer there. Oh, probably got hungry. Punk. How many fingers did I get? All five. Yeah, five fingers. Uh, perception of 14. Chromagill's just looking around, seeing if he can see, like, any sort of, like, hint of where the monkeys would have gone, like, swaying in the trees or something, like, if they if they rushed off in a direction. I'm going to do the same. With an eight, I'm probably not going to see squat. Nope. Uh, Chromagill. Uh, you see what used to be where the monkeys were is now two or three crows kind of like hopping along the road, smelling the blood. Well, I'm not seeing monkeys anymore, but it looks like the, the, the blood has attracted some new, some new eyes. It's kind of just <laughs> gestures at the crows. Yeah, the crow is like very brazen. He kind of just like meanders his way up to you, like hops along. He's like looking over at Wake like, hey, can I, you have food? I, I toss him on the limbs, <laughs> just kind of down the road a little bit. As you do that, like three more just like appear in its uh, in its way, just like all coming down to take a snack out of it. And one of them opens his mouth and says, "Good afternoon." <laughs> Under the floorboard. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I scatter a few of the limbs around, like I'll say, like. I take three of the full limbs with me in case we need them as bait, but I'd leave the rest for the crows. I should have described that, by the way, too. So it's uh, two hands, uh, two, two, uh, two arms, both assumingly from the same person. Uh, mm. there, is a, there is one leg that looks like it's kind of like rended off from the uh, undercalf. My leg. Okay. My leg. <laughs> uh, there is a little bit of tathers of what looks like a... Uh, a suspender and a little bit of clothing, mm. so that fell out of the bag as well. Uh, all caked in blood, by the way. Mm. Uh, and there is one small silver ring that has a red ruby inside of it that fell out as well. It was on one of the fingers I popped off. I just. No, it came out with the bag. Oh, okay. It wasn't on any of the limbs. 
Gotcha. So um, if you say they're from all like all these finger like all these limbs are from the same creature, presumably. Uh, from what you presume, yes. All right, then I only have one finger that's good for this ring. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do an arcana check on that ring. Okay. Since almost anything made here has a purpose. <clears throat> that is an eighteen. An eighteen. I guess the other fingers I cut off were just for funsies. Oh, it's magic. You can see like arcane energy swirling inside the, the gemstone. Mm. What it does, you don't know, but this is a magic ring, and unfortunately, unless you have a tiny finger, that's not fitting on you. Well, magical items usually... Well, yeah, it'll probably fit on your pinky. Your... Don't magic items usually like shape to the uh They have individual? to be attuned. Ah. Yeah. So, the only way he would actually be able to wear it is if he puts it on his pinky and then it attunes after 24 hours. I Assuming show, it's I, I show it to Voltara. Yeah. What do? <laughs> she doesn't know identify. Damn. We've been over, unfortunately <laughs> we've been over this. She's just like, I don't have that spell. <laughs> yeah, but could you guess? Is there, is there any way that she could make an arcana check to guess the nature of this? Uh, kind of let stuff? me pass the paperwork. It's right here. Oh, that one. Yep. That, I was actually hoping I'm like, no, no. Do arcana check. <laughs> Arcane, well, she does have a plus seven to that. So exactly. Let's go. What do? What do? Hey, and that's 20. Hey, she knows exactly what do. Hmm. All Is right. this good mojo or bad mojo? No, it's good mojo. Hmm. It summons hooked horrors to murder you. Ooh. It has something to do with a verbal component. Hmm. Well, I'll it's not no cursed. It looks like it's some kind of enhancement. Hmm. It she do puts good. It in your hand. Hmm. You, you turn it on. I mean, he has to attune to it. No, he can put it on oh, his pinky. Gotcha. Uh, okay. You feel the wind in your chest is, is gilded. Like it's all of a sudden you just get like a nice breath of fresh air from from that. <sighs> is it working? Something happened. Everyone roll a wisdom save. Uh-oh. Not you. I, I know that's what I'm like. I'm sorry. I just wondered the things I'm okay at. 11. Uh-oh. How do monks not have proficiency in wisdom saves? Whatever. Uh, that is a 17 regardless. I need you to roll me a persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Oh, persuasion. boy. Persuasion. Interesting. Let's <clears throat> give you silver breath you can <laughs> barter. That is an 18. An 18? Anyone who did not succeed in 18, which is pretty much everyone. I was going to say, that's not uh -oh. me. I was one off. <laughs> you all instantly die. <laughs> man, Mo man, Morgan's really charismatic. Like, I would believe anything he would say right now. Is this technically a charm effect? Uh, Not so much a charm as it just feels like when he says something, like, it's a guarantee. Like, you feel it in your bones that whatever he assures you is 100% legit. Ring of pep talking. So it's just like a free persuasion, I guess? Not really. Like, like it's obviously not harming yeah. you at this point, but, like, you feel very much, like... he. I feel very agreeable towards him. Yes. For anything that you would tell someone, they you if they don't succeed that check, they'll automatically believe you as the truth. All right, when he said, it's doing something, Krovik, you'll just... It absolutely is. <laughs> uh, Seems that way. Fucking, uh, You're smart, Morgan. Yeah, Devil, Devil Grin <laughs> immediately just like looks over to you, and he 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 like after feeling that he's just like, hmm, that feels a little off because he does have something uh, for that, mm -hmm. considering that he is a he is in Code of Ronin, Code of the Ronin. Mm. He's gonna roll something against that. He absolutely succeeds that. Mm, that does make sense then. The Swivelblin do sometimes try to tip merchants. Uh, Try to tip merchant offers to their favor. Hmm. That might be a little something to just give them a little bit of a boost to that. Hmm. From now on, I'm doing the shopping. Whatever you say, Morgan. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's I, after right. it makes sense to me. After Devil Grin tells you that, like you automatically can feel. Wait, that was a sway of magic. <laughs> so uh, you're aware uh, now that I use an action to use stillness of mind. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for everyone here, you all know that this ring is just magical con man bullshit. But for anyone else who doesn't know that, that's what that checks for. Sweet. So with that, you pretty much have just obtained a con man's ring. Sweet. Ring of confidence. Mm. Next one. 
con man stands for, confidence man. But, you know, I guess, the, I guess there's no real well, need for the pun. We're pulling a that's... confidence. Based on what you were just told that, obviously this guy was some kind of merchant. And mm -hmm. since he told, since Devil Grin told you that this is a trade route to get people from Colas over to Gulliver, something happened before he even got outside. So that whole thing where him saying, this might have happened in the Underdark before he got outside and the monkeys just stole the bag, <clears throat> that might hold some Seems water. Seems likely. Well, I guess if we keep our eyes out for a, a missing a missing merchant and perhaps someone who knows just a little too much about those horrifying creatures, we might we might have some sort of an answer, but who knows? This that monkey could have had that bag for, for months. This may be something that isn't even isn't even a threat anymore. Hmm. You say that, Valtar is actually gonna roll a history check on that. Speaking of which, anybody know like that thing that makes things clean, that spell? Precedentation? Yeah, Wake don't know but that. She has that, actually. Ah, uh, clean bag. <laughs> Let's not... You could be nice about it, Wake. Please? Valtar is just like, before we do that, I should at least see if there's anything about this bag that's interesting. Like, the time of this blood. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Like I said, she's going to roll an investigation. Well, actually, she's going to roll an investigation check, which Valtar has a plus seven in. Hot damn, Valtar. It's full of limbs, that's what I know. Also, it's magic and hold lots of thingies. Uh, you could probably hold up to about 150 pounds of something in that bag. That is really So long useful. as it can fit inside. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that that means it fits 150 pounds worth of things, but I cannot shove, like, a massive thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a small yeah. bag, so you can't be like, let's put this table in there. Like, despite you, it being within the You hold a lot of change in that coin purse. Uh... She, with this check, the bag, uh, based on the caked blood, this thing has probably, this, the monkeys probably have had this thing for at least maybe a week or so. So this is not new, but it's not old either. Mm. Hmm. Well, I suppose either way, we should just keep our eye out and see if we can figure out any sort of leads on this, but... At the same time, we are here to find the find the day star, and I don't know how much this has to do with that. No, but it does mean that we should proceed with caution, at least before we enter the mouth of the cave, says Devil Grin. Works so, for me, Wake says as he's transferring a bunch of stuff into the bag. <laughs> Just dropping his stuff in there. So Morgan, I walk how around many, with a backpack that is I, never <laughs> it's like it's never not full. Yeah, I so, have so much gear. <laughs> Morgan, how many magical items do you have? Because technically a character can only equip three magic items at a time. Okay. Would the chromatic rounds count? No, that's no, ammo. That's ammo. So Necro Star, Banshee Blade, and now the ring. That's so that's three, three items. That's three items. Yeah, but you can't equip the blade and the star at the same time. That's fair. Dual wheel. I mean... Unless you're dual wielding them, that's the that's, case. That's true. It Yeah, no, it would just be another... Option this is extra. like for the sake of say in battle, you know. Yeah. Right, right, right. It, yeah, I'm just think I'm just seeing it as I have options for that extra attack feat. Right. So yeah, no. So I'm guessing I'm capped. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So with this, you guys decide to keep on going. Uh, you are now like elevating higher and higher into the uh, into the tree line. This feels You're like the opposite of the way we should be going. Wake says, realizing a couple hours into this journey. <laughs> oh no, the path will lead into a, into a mouth very, uh, very soon. Uh, a devil grin assures you. All right. Uh, about an hour has passed uh, after everyone needing to... I need everyone to roll me another survival check as you're now still going uphill. Oh boy. Blue down. 16. Well, that's not bad. My and second 18. And third favorite. 18? Android. Yep. Uh, do, do, do. That is a 23. Micha was now like you from last time. Uh oh. So she now has a point of exhaustion. Mm. During our. What does exhaustion do again? Uh, it gives you. Uh, the first point of exhaustion is all of your skill, uh, skill based roles have disadvantage. Did you take that one in disadvantage? Sorry, I don't, I don't want to be like a... <laughs> doesn't matter, I rolled a nat 20. Oh, there you hey. go. Yeah. So. I was just confused. Uh, dur oh. During our hour of travel, Chromagill <laughs> would have been talking to uh, 
uh, to Devil Grin, just okay. asking asking about his youth. He's never met one of his kind before, so he just wants to know, like, so what was it like growing up for you? What what kind of things did you do? I I I love learning about people in different places. Uh, the tale of Devil Grin at the very start of it, anyway, is a little on the sour side. If you really wish to know, I mean, you don't have to go into any details you wouldn't be comfortable knowing, but I'm just. Always going to be curious. Well, I well, it is nice to actually hear someone wanting to hear about at least myself or my race before just assuming I'm just another dragonborn. <laughs> Chromagill kind of just gives a shrug. Maybe you are. I haven't met many of them either. He just kind of like laughs at that. Well, as I've stated before, I am a Drakai. Uh, Drak uh, my people look this way because as for our people's history... Very much long ago, well before I was born, and before any of us were born, and hell, maybe even this whole entire country was put together. My race was said to actually be holders of primordial dragons. We used to rule the Underdark. We used to be the... We used to be the owners of the Underdark. We used to run the entire place ourselves. I don't remember what the entire details uh, of my history are, considering that I never really spoke to anyone other a part of my history. Uh, my kobold companions sort of gave me some loose knowledge, but apparently we were betrayed, and my ancestors were forced to take a curse that makes us look like dragons, so those that we enslaved, we then d were now forced to look like. Hmm. So your physiology, your, your people's physiology wasn't originally so dragon-like? We have no idea what our original forms used to look like. Huh. Hmm. But... If you're asking about me then, well, apparently someone in the Underdark actually knew what I was and sold me off to the highest bidder. And that highest bidder was a Kenku Lord a little bit of ways away from here all the way to the east. I'm gonna see if he knows Kenku. Oh, uh, would that be a history? Yes. Uh, 18. You know what Kenku are. They're, uh, they're like Arakakra. They're flightless bird people. Gotcha. They are well known for mimicry. So you were taken in by different people. You, you never really knew your, your, your birth parents? Indeed. And when I was sold, they told me that my people were just meant to be a lesser race of servitude. And then kobolds uh, raided the place, saw me, and, well, being what kobolds are, they thought I was some kind of dragon god at first, and they decided to steal me as well, and this was when I was eight years old. Wow. All this at such a young age. Indeed. Well... With these kobolds, I then was taught the ways of how to use a blade, and considering that I was growing much more rapidly than they were, they realized who I was, finally. And they saw it as a blessing, and they took me in as their son. So in the end, you did, you did end up with a family, though. That's pleasant. That's good. Indeed. And with that, I was taught the ways of the blade. And he holds up his katana. It is, a, it is a great specimen of a weapon, for sure. Indeed. <laughs> Looks at his big, dumb hands. I've never... Had the dexterity for such things, and too much metal, but you, you look like you know how to wield it. Hmm. Well, if you don't mind, sir, I could test to see how sturdy you are. He takes his hand very slowly and puts it up to your chest. Roll an athletics check. Bless you. Uh, bu -bu 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 uh, 17. 19 plus his strength check. Easily, he shoves you ten feet away. Huh! Uh, Wake, noticing this, instantly takes up like a pose, thinking like, "Oh shit, we've been betrayed!" No, 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 no! Wow, you've you've got quite the push on you there. He kind of like smi he smiles a little bit. Yes, uh, locked away in this form, even though it is not what I originally was supposed to be from my ancestor's sake, it is the strength of a dragon. Well, that's impressive, and will be handy in case we're we're actually accosted. Thank you. This is. This has all been fascinating. I'm sorry if I've made you talk more about yourself than you were prepared on this journey. I'm, I'm sure plenty of people just kind of hire you and stand silently, but I love learning about places and people. Oh, if you think that's interesting, we're almost at the mouth of the cave, and I'll have something even more interesting to show you. I can't wait. As he says that, everyone now... Ominous. You're You're still... A little... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I... I, I <laughs> woof, 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 and just start using it as a walking stick again, now head on a bit more of a swivel. 
Like, even Valtara and Micha were a little off kiltered by that, and Devil Grin just like turns to you. Again, unfortunately, he's showing his side of his face, so you can't tell if he's being a shit or not because of his injury, but he just right. looks to you, holds his hands up, like, no, no, it was just a show of fate. It was a show of uh, strength. Wake acquiesces and continues. Chromagill seems in good spirits, so. Yeah, I'm just kind of laughing at how powerful he is as a big man who's not used to being pushed with such ease. Mm. That was neat. <laughs> uh, so with that, you guys are now nearing what looks like a small dip that uh, goes down. And you're now, you're no longer, you're like going flat for like a few minutes and now you're going straight back down. Uh, with not a lot of, like, issue with, like, say, like, hey, if you start going down now, you're gonna have to, like, start watching your footing. Uh, you're now seeing on the ground, there are now tracks of what looks like caravans or carriages, and mm -hmm. there's a couple of, not horse prints, but they look more like dragon prints on the floor. Huh. Like, something more draconic, or something way more clawed. animalistic that you, yeah, it's way more clawed, like, almost like a bird's talon. Uh, these pathways are going back and forth. They're in the road. Uh, the road is starting to get a little bit more muddy. Uh, you are now seeing that the sky is starting to disappear behind a shadow as there is now looks like a roof that's starting to, as you're going down into these, uh, into this pathway. Uh, before you enter in, uh, Devil Grin kind of like looks to you all. I know this, uh, trip has possibly not been easy on, he looks over to Morgan, he looks over to Misha. Perhaps you would all like to take a short rest before we continue. It's up to you guys. I think that that would benefit. Okay. So, like, how long do you want to stay? Because the four hours will clean up. Like, four hours will clean up your exhaustion. Mm. Not even four. I'll say two. I was going to say. Yeah, two hours will clean up your exhaustion. Would, yeah, I think the two would be fine. Uh, Wake's going to ask Devil Grin if we can use these <laughs> two hours to... Practice? Show, show me a thing or two about the sword. Absolutely. Uh... With that, he like he pretty much shows you now. Uh, he takes up what appears to be like a stance, like he's sitting down on the floor with his knees, and he like puts his hands on his clawed hands on top of his knees, and he's like asking you to do the same. Hero's pose, gotcha. Uh, he stands up, and he kind of like looks at you. I know this is going to be a little strange considering because you probably have never seen this stance before, but he takes up something that he tells you is called the Kiori stance. All right. Uh, I need you to roll a performance check to try and take that same pose. Performance. Interesting. Well, let's see what we got with my tiny little baby charisma. It's a 16, though. That's not bad. Okay, not bad. You're able to mimic the same pose. Yeah. Uh, like, a, a little bit so that he looks to you, he's like, oh, not bad. And he, like, takes the sword and he dips it down a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and find the, the uh, pose for you because it's actually part of the class. Mm -hmm. Oh. Let me use the restroom real quick. Go for it. Do, 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 do. I said it was the Kiori pose, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, here we go. The Kiori stance, uh, what it does for him, that he pretty much, I'm going to say like he tells you this in flavor, like what this stance is actually for, but for him, when you hit a creature with a melee weapon, you regain 1d4 hit points. Interesting. So it's like a life drinker or... Yep. It pretty much, uh, and then he tells you, there's ways to positive, uh, to channel this energy inside of you, positive and negative. Uh, considering that you want to take on this form to do damage, he's going to show you the negative stance. Uh, right. This is not going to help you for you, because you're, you're not a samurai. On this I'm just trying to learn how to use the weapon. Uh, so he's going to show you the negative channeling of the Kiori stance, which, for him, the first creature you hit with a melee weapon on this turn must succeed a wisdom saving throw or suffer disadvantage on weapon attacks until the beginning of your next turn. Hmm. So he's pretty much showing you how to take your blade and stagger a, a stagger an enemy that they almost, like, for some reason forget how to even hold their own weapon. I'm learning Ichimonji double. Making them lose balance with your strikes. Pretty much. Uh, so I need you to roll me... Uh, two things for right now. He's going to practice a swing to show you how it works. I need you to roll me a history check. I know about this swing. Do, 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 that is a nine. A nine? A little difficult to understand at this point. Uh -huh. It's again, you've you've never like not my done culture. this before. <laughs> yeah, this is not something you've ever done before. So even Devil Grin's just like, okay, obviously like. I'm going to have to show you how to do this a little bit more. But basically, here's how the swing actually works. So 
You know, Wake's used to like flourishes and things like that. This is very straightforward and direct. Yeah, this this uh, attack that he's showing you is kind of like a piercing move. So it's taking the sword and then swinging it up, almost like an uppercut, but in a way that it almost feels like the blade is swerving with the wind. And then whatever like viscera or how the sword like whatever it attacks, the blade returns back almost like it's going back into the sheath on one of the swings. So I need you to roll me one more performance check. That is a nine or a, yeah, natural twenty with nineteen. Nice. So with that, you're able to, you're able to replicate the swing. But you know that you're not going to actually like be able to execute it properly unless you actually hit something with it. So you know how to swing the blade, but you're not really sure what the purpose of it is at this point. So you have a, you have a little bit of an idea of how to swing the blade, but with a little bit more practice, you should be able to like be able to understand why this is happening. All right. So yeah, Wake's going to... Not, not, those... a, not a huge, not a massive leap, but a leap nonetheless. Yeah, Wake's going to take those pointers and just kind of practice for a bit while everybody else that needed it rests up. Okay. So with that, you guys are now clean of your exhaustion. Oh, thank God. Uh, he turns to the lot of you just before you're about to enter the mouth of the cave, which, by the way, it's, it's huge. <laughs> like, it's enough for a caravan to on each side of the road to go in, both in and out. So it almost looks like this is some kind of like out, what used to be an outpost for the cave. Mm. Uh, there are like some kegs off to the side. There's some campground materials here. People have like made little pit stops here before you. Uh, Double Grin now turns to the lot of you and he kind of like stands at the ready. Like he stands at the ready and he looks to you all. All right. Well, as I've spoken to you, Chromagill, I am not seen very well in the Underdark. My people are considered a lesser race. But we have a way to work around this, and I have a name that I would like you all to use so long as we're in public. Uh, let me get that name. From now on, while we were in the Underdark and we're not speaking in private, you may know me as Sagrin. 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 S-A-Y-G-W-R-E-N. And don't worry, it'll be much easier as I, uh, it'll be much easier to understand this by, uh, I will be much easier to understand this if I were to do this. You actually watch as his form begins to like crumple and almost shrivel. He's getting shorter. And his body, the scales are smoothing out. And his eyes almost turn like into a normal human's eyes. Within the moment, what stands before you is a very well dressed drow. He has, uh, Almost down to like his uh, shoulders, uh, long, nice, thin uh, white hair. His skin is charcoal colored. His eyes are purple instead of the yellow that it used to be. And he's wearing a very nice tunic that turns into the gown. And it also has a little bit of the shreds of what was the, uh, uh, the I apologize, the scale mail that he was wearing. So it's like he added an extra like what looks like an illusionary shirt on mm. top of it. Are you... A shapeshifter? No, my kind are capable of doing this. This is how we're so, able So, yes. To... <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you wish to call it that, but this is the only form I can take. I can mm. return from this form at any will, at any time I wish. Mm. But so long as we are in the Underdark and we're not among prying eyes, I would much rather stay this way until I feel it is much safer to return to my normal form. Yeah, makes sense to me. I traveled incognito a lot when I was uh, younger. Uh, that's fair. Granted, I can kind of do that too, but I need a dead corpse. I just use a hood and a mask. I'll likely just avoid calling you by name. I tend to call people by what they look like anyway, so I'll probably just call you that. But does he have like a new name now that he's in this form? Takes Sag a Sagrath. Well, no, I mean like the a descriptor yeah. name. Takes a look at him. He's he he appears like he lost maybe a foot of height. Okay. Mm. You say he's got like kind of like his his hair is now like kind of a a, a white or a silver. Yeah, he's now. A, he's a dark elf. Yeah, now. he's a drow. Okay. <laughs> Chromagill just stares at him for a second. Just <laughs> come on, Chromagill. What would you call this dark skinned drow? <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> trying to think. Don't of... put this Otis on. <laughs> no, no, no. no I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> St 
Shadow Silverhair. <laughs> Silver Shadow. Silver Shadow is what he'd call you. I like it. <laughs> Very well, if that's what you wish. Uh, so with that, you guys now descend into the Underdark. AZ turns to you. For those of you who don't actually have the capabilities to see in the dark, we probably have about 20 minutes before we have to start dawning light. Mm. Uh, as he said, uh, you're now entering what looks like uh, stalactites, stalagmites all around here. There are actually like parts of the stone that look like it was dwarven made. There's etchings of what looks like uh, markings on here. Yeah, you said this place used to be some sort of outpost, or it looked like it might have been? Yes. Uh, it's basically just like a small little stopping point before they reach the surface. Uh, as you enter, you are the light is still purchased behind you, so you can still see. Uh, there is a small little ridge that you can look over that has like a little bit of a handlebar. Uh, as you look over the ridge, the entire you you look down and there's a giant pit. Like this is like maybe a crater sized pit that goes all the way down, and there is light giving purchase at the bottom because that's lava. Echo. Echo. Nope. Five seconds later. Echo. Echo. Uh, oh, it takes a bit. Echo. Co. <laughs> uh, you can see the bioluminous. Uh, you can see the bioluminous and mushroom forest that everyone was talking about. Uh, the pathway itself. There's a big, huge gap of like space, so it's not like it's a. It's not like it's a narrow path. Mm -hmm. But the road winds down along the outside of the crater, and it spirals down near the lava. Is this the grand staircase I'd heard about? Indeed. They weren't kidding. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, does anyone want to roll a perception check to gauge uh, where the ocean would be on the staircase? Um, or I'm, try I'm trying to think. I might actually have a, like my wanderer's ability does give, give me a advantage. very good sense. Okay. So I have a nat one, so no idea from Chromagale. Let's see if I can get better than. And you said this is survival, or we can make it survival. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, well, wh which one did you want me to roll? I'm sorry. Perception. Okay, perception. Okay, that'd be uh, 16 then. 16? Probably just before, like maybe about a couple of leagues up just before the city that touches the, uh, the, lava, the lava bed, that's pretty much where uh, the seabed would be. All right. So somewhere within the bioluminescent forest will be the pathway that leads into the, uh, the, the city where the Malu is waiting for you. All right. Shall we? As you were. So, you guys start to head down the staircase. Uh, there are what looks like, uh, there are bioluminescent mushrooms, but they're not enough to give you purchase for light. Uh, you are on what looks like a dirt pathway. Uh, there are dried up bushes and some kind of like, like crumpled up vegetation. You're still on the, you're still on the road. So, you can see the tracks in, uh, under your feet. Uh, at this point though, it has been 20 minutes, and now the light is just dimming away. Like, mm. this is the point where now you're going to have to start turning on those lanterns. Yep. Wake snaps his fingers and... <laughs> light gives purchase. You now have 60 feet of uh, light that's surrounding you. Uh, at least in near you, anyway. Mm. Uh, everyone else gets that. Everyone else who's dark, so like, uh, Devil Grin, uh, Micha, and Chromagill... <laughs> You kind of actually have to step away from everyone else just so that light doesn't, doesn't. like smack you because that's sunlight sensitivity. Mm -hmm. uh, Micha doesn't have sunlight sensitivity, so she's kind of okay with that, but you and Devil Grin kind of have to take heed to that, that any bright light that'll flash in your face will fuck you up a little bit or at least stagger you. We can be used to it when it's the sun in the sky and it's a constant light we adjust, but with it being a flickering flame right in front of us, a little less. Yeah prep so with that i think now is a good time we can take a break huh, works right. for me we'll be right back after this welcome back to the table i just love that picture you have not yet uh, not, we're gonna yeah. fix that in a hot second so we're underground it's dark can't see shit without this lantern all righty. Getting darker. Uh, I'll let you know when we can switch over in a hot second. Uh, yeah, because there might be a map. Spoiler warning. Mm-hmm. So, 
couple hours pass by. You've been uh, going down the staircase for quite some time. There's uh, a little bit of, like, every once in a great while, you'll pass by some, like, outcroppings of buildings here and there. Like, there's some folks' homes off to the side. Uh, there's a couple of farms here and there, which is weird because you don't know what would be growing here. Uh, there are a couple of subterranean, like, what looks like vegetables, so a lot of root stuff. So, obviously, potatoes are going to be a big thing down here. Uh, Haters, yams, turnips. Yeah, yams, turnips. Delicious stuff. Uh, you could actually all, like, as you're walking past, you could smell, like, the earthy, uh, like, uh, aroma of all the plant life here. And it does, like, remind you, like, for any of you who have actually had, like, I don't know, like, like potato soup or someone who would have some kind of a rooty, uh, rooty flavored, um, dish, mm -hmm. out of the party anyway, this place just smells like it's all full of that. Like, you would take one bite out of something and you could just taste the flavor. Taste uh, the flavor. Cromagill's never tasted anything. Except sweet victory. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Uh, so, two hours have passed by. As you're going down, uh, there looks... I need everyone to roll me a perception check. And for those of you who have dark vision, you can roll with advantage. Ah, uh, that's a ten. That is a five. Eighteen! Bless you. It's alright. Everyone's sneezing. It's allergy season. Oh, man. Fucking Devil Grin got a nat one. With advantage? That poor bastard. Yeah. Oh, no, no. You're actually right. And they rolled a 19. So. Ah. He's good. The boy's good. I love how basically Delma Grin is our Riddick. Pretty much. And we're basically doing a fantasy version of Pitch Black. <laughs> uh, Devil Grin kind of like stops everyone. He like kind of like stands to the side and he holds his katana in front of everyone. Oh. Huh. Let's get off the road. I got. Wait, looks to the left and right. I got an 18 in perception. Did I see anything? There is a turned over cart and two dead griffins on the road. Yeah, there's there's definitely some trouble ahead. We might want to be a little cautious. There's an overturned cart and some some very large dead griffins. Out of curiosity, if there is trouble ahead, would that be worth something to somebody if we got rid of it? This feels like a trap. Oh, fair enough. Mm. Devil Grin kind of, like, looks over to the side, and he, like, hold, points his sword off in the distance. There's a farm not too far from here. We should probably walk over that way. All right. So there's a path leading to off a small the little staircase? farm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a small little path. It's not, like, part of the road, but you can see, like, a little pathway that, like, just ebbs off into the bioluminescence. So with that, you guys travel, and now we can switch to the map. You now enter what looks like a very moderate cottage next to Might a small to little. Uh, switch the player map over to that because right now it's. Still oh dear! On the boat. It didn't. It didn't just go. That's yeah, you, you need to move the. There uh, we red. are. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You could probably F eleven that too, Tyler. Uh, it's. Yeah. Uh, I actually click on the the website. Yeah, you have to click on the, there. We there we go. go. By God. So with the, uh, there are actually like lit lanterns around here. So the light source is actually pretty, uh, pretty well off. You could actually turn off all your resources if you would so wish to. Okay. Uh, uh, next, next to it is actually what appears to be bones of some kind of creature that are popping up out of the ground, but no one seems to be nonplussed about that except for everyone who's from the surface, obviously. Uh, it's a big thing. Ah, yes, uh. As a custom, we normally, uh, we allow any sort of natural causes uh, of creatures. So obviously something here, who have, whatever they were raising, probably have died, and they left it out in the, uh, out in the front for other creatures to grow on. As, you, as uh, Devil Grin moves over to the giant skull, he kind of like takes his sword and he pokes at one of the open visible holes near the jawline, and there's actually like what looks like isopods sitting inside of it. Their fertilizer is actually quite uh, quite good for some of the crops here. Hmm. What was this thing? I'm going to roll a nature check for him. Hmm. 
Hard to say. From the looks of it, it is draconic in some kind of origin. It might be, uh, mm. might have been a beast of burden, some kind of worm that they were using on the farm. Huh. Well, whose farm is this? Maybe they know. That is a good question. Let us make haste over to the door. He kind of like takes the hilt of his sword and he knocks on the door. No answer. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ooh, the nat 20 perception. Do I see anything like of interest in our immediate vicinity? Um, you see what looks like a broken chair, uh, and sitting in the chair looks like, uh, it looks like there was some kind of pitcher with an evaporated drink in there. There's like a little bit of something left inside of it. Just gonna head over that way. Uh, uh there are windows, uh, on these door, uh, on the wall over here. Uh, what's hanging above the wall uh, is a little bit more bones of what looks like smaller animals, but they're not decorated in a way that it looks like alarming. This actually looks like it's a sort of like little preserve, because again, Devil Grin told you most of the uh, bodies used here feed or fuel some kind of ecosystem for something else. Mm -hmm. We're just going to kind of put his hand up and try to get a look inside the house. Oh, by the window, obviously. Yeah, so roll a perception check. I'm just kind of picturing like a a dogfish shark. Pretty like, much like that. Pressed against the the window. Hello. <laughs> uh, that's a fifteen. A fifteen. Uh, with a little bit of what uh light you have from your lantern, you don't see people inside, but you do see what looks like a living area, and there looks like there's some kind of weird bulbous creature that's attached to the wall and looming over a fireplace. Like a taxidermy? Like a yes. Oh, okay. Like a taxidermy So I was going to say, trophy. if it's just chained there. Oh. oh, no, no, it's not chained there. It looks like a trophy. But what the creature looks like, it's round, amorphous, and has a bunch of stalks growing out from underneath it. I have no idea what that is, and I don't see anybody inside. It doesn't look like this... I... Uh, I, like, I'm seeing, like, zero signs of life, like, nothing moving at all. Uh, nothing moving whatsoever in this room anyway. Uh, uh, Devil Grin kind of looks at you. Well, that does make sense. When it's daytime for you, it's nighttime for the folks here. This is when they sleep. How do you know? We have these things called lunar calendars. Huh. He I... actually, like, looks over to the side, and you look on top of the, uh, where one of the taxidermies are that's hanging up. Uh, there's a small little crystal that actually is faded blue, and it's uh, almost in the shape of an upside down teardrop. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. When that turn when that turns red, that's when they know it's the day hours. Huh. Chromagill uses rapport spore. Anything within a thirty foot radius will now be able to hear my telepathy. Uh, I'm guessing if it's uh blocked by by a wall i guess so yeah if they're if they're inside bunkered down without any windows or anything yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna tap on the window just like knock 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 (laughs) if anyone can hear my voice we mean you no harm that's good to know chromagill thank you you're welcome (laughs) yeah like devil grin like in his drow form kind of like shrivels at that like uh oh okay (laughs) also for the sake of this are uh voltara and micha just sort of hanging back somewhere yeah they're still there Okay. Uh, I'm just not going to put them. Like, I, I can put them on here, for sure. Let me just grab. So it's, a, it's a lot of things to control. Oh, yeah, there lot, you are, Voltara. Yeah, Voltara and Misha. Unfortunately, she has no official art as of right now, so we're just going to go ahead and give her an NPC token. This is what we get for not actually hiring her. <laughs> <laughs> and yet she's <laughs> crucial nonetheless. Arguably more crucial. Uh, you look inside. Uh, does anyone else look inside the windows? Why not? I'll give it a shot. Perception? Okay. Yep. That is a 15. A 15? Uh, <laughs> yep, you look inside the window. You kind of like press the light up against the window so you can see what's going on. You could have swore you saw something move into a room off in the darkness. Is this window locked? You'd have to check that. I check. I quickly tell everyone, I think I just saw something go into another room. Hold on, checking the window. Investigation check. <clears throat> Investigation to see if it's locked? Yep. All right. That is a... If you want to do it discreetly, if you just want to fucking make noise, then go ahead. I mean, if it's unlocked, it should just slide, but we'll see. That is an 11. 
The door, uh, the window itself is unlocked, and you can pull it up, but it feels like something's barricading it down. The hell? It feels like, like, as soon as you start to open it, it's wedged against something else on the inside. Well, now that I got a crack in the window. Hey, is anyone in there? I thought I heard, like, some choking or something. Do you need help? You hear glass fall in the room as something is di uh, diving deeper into the darkness. That seems like a yes to wake. Uh, so he is going to force this window open. All right, athletics check. Uh, that is a 24. Uh, sorry, 23. 19 on the die. It was held shut by nailed wood. And you watch as, like, the little strips of nail are pulled up as you push the window open. Well, uh... Oh, we're breaking and entering now. You don't know what that is. <laughs> I've talked to plenty of people. Some of Fair them are Fair enough, criminals. you know exactly <laughs> what yeah, yeah. Devil, Devil, Devil Grey kind of, like, bites the bottom of his lip, like, are you certain you want to do that? If anyone catches us, the law will be on us. Well, not... Hey, your window's open. Are you okay? <laughs> I heard shattering in there. We had reason to believe you may have been in danger. Hmm. We're here to help. Using using your ring of fancifulness. Roll uh persuasion. Persuasion with, with advantage. Uh, that is an eighteen. An eighteen. No response to you verbally, but you hear skittering going upstairs. Mm. But when I mean skittering, I mean like a long knife skittering across the floor. Oh, no. What? You said we're here to help you, and I believed you. I believed you, too. I did, it, too. It bothers me how much I believe you. <laughs> I've got the whole world I know we're not in my hand. hand. <laughs> All right, look, I, I know we wanted to avoid that tipped-over cart you were talking about, but this also seems shady as hell. I'm just going to throw that out there. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, we also have an alibi. Look at this. I found a chair with a dried-up drink. Someone was definitely here, at least recently. How dried up? Uh, investigation. Use Five. Mm -hmm. Use them spore smarts. <laughs> Five. All right. I love, I Stares love at this. Let me roll for Micha. She's Dry. Got, she's got better. Micha's got some better Dry. skills on that. Hell yeah, Micha with a, a 23. Wow. Yeah, she's pretty good at investigation, according to this. Mm -hmm. She's a doctor. Um, Micha. Well, she was. No, she What's was your diagnosis on this chair, Dr. Micha? What's the diagnosis, Doc? It's a chair. This isn't a drink. It looks like some kind of cleaning material. Oh, well, as someone who kind of typically does neither in a traditional sense. She kind of like puts her, she puts her finger in it and she holds it up. She kind of like puts it on a swab that she has from her medical kit. It's Coke. <laughs> no, she, she bites on her finger, rubs some blood on the side of it, and then traces the chemical over the blood disappears. Ah, uh, Naruto summoning. Hmm. It's a cleaning agent. Is this to hide some sort of misdeed? If it covered your blood so quickly? So, we found a bag full of limbs, a turned over cart with dead griffins, and now a pitcher with cleaning agent that can get rid of blood. One of these things is not like the other. I think we're dealing with assassins. Are there any assassins in there? I mean, they, they were moving around pretty loud. They're pretty shitty assassins if they are. Mm. You hear something crash upstairs. See, I mean, if that was an assassin, they're really, really and bad at their job. And something fumbles on the other side. <clears throat> at their job. Can I interrupt me again? <laughs> I don't know. Say something. Everyone roll so, perception check. So I was think. That's a 13. That's a 7. Uh, 19. Devil Grin, unfortunately, gets a shitty one. 
So does Valtara. And so does Misha. God. 19 for me. 19? So I, I have a feeling Chromagill, I something. there's something behind the fence that fell out of the house. Oh, hey, over there! Hello! Do you live in this house? Uh, you heard it right here. Something just fled this direction. Hey! We're, we're just trying to see what's going on! Wake's gonna leap up to the roof to see if he can get a better vantage point. Athletics uh, check. Yeah, is this place like one or two stories? Two stories. Okay, so that'll be a little more. Difficile. Classic farmhouse. That's, uh, you said athletics? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Athletics, that's a 21. 21? Takes you a couple of tries to, like, shimmy on the front door of the, like, the awning that's poking out. But you use that to catch your footing, and you're able to climb up on the second st story of the house. <gasps> there Stop. are scratch marks all over the roofing. Like, someone took a giant cleaver, like, even a great sword, and carved their way inside. So there's a hole in the roof. There's a hole on the other side, right here. Um, another point, something broke its way into the house from the roof, so uh -huh. uh, we have boarded up, wind well, we have nailed shut windows, roof that's been clawed into, and no survivors inside is what I'm assuming. Something wanted in that house. Someone fleeing in this direction. Uh, yeah, uh, do, do I see anything to that side that uh, you're talking about where we heard the clattering? Uh, when you hear the clattering, uh, you see something, you see a large, round, bulbous thing kind of, like, clutter, uh, like, chitter its way inside the small shed. Is it similar to the shape I saw by the fireplace? The fireplace. The, when you, you peeked you, in the Yeah, window. when I peeked in, you said there was a taxidermy oh, trophy oh, oh, thing oh, there. Oh, that, no, uh, it was, it's not that shape. Okay. They were both described as bulbous, just had to check. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. No worries. So, uh, I think it made its way over to that shed over there. Whatever it is. I mean, it's either scared or it's the thing that killed everybody, so... Uh, you see on... You see below you are a couple of barrels. And they... Uh, you see a couple of barrels and they have, like, a little bit of weird elvish inscribed on them. I can read elven. Can yep. I read it from here? Roll a perception check. What do your fish eyes see? My fish eyes get a 14. <coughs> a 14? You see something inscribed on the ke on the kegs, and it says, Flump Chemical. Hey, um, I've only heard of these things recently, but are Flump Chemicals used for anything? I've... Chromagill, I'm gonna roll. I'm not Chromagill, sorry. I was mostly asking Micha, who's. Yeah, Micha. Micha has. <laughs> Chromagill has a 12 in history, or whatever and it would be. I'm guessing Voltara also knows quite a bit about creatures, so. Yeah, Cr Voltara has nothing. Micha might have something. Let's see if Devil Grin has anything. Devil Grin has absolutely nothing. Micha just looks up and then tries to think about it a little bit. She takes another swab of the chemical. I guess flump material is very acidic in nature. I have no idea what purposes it would have other than the fact that we just found out it could be a cleaning agent. Well, there uh, you go. Yeah, I was going to say, Woody, uh, <laughs> don't really know what senses Chromagill has available. Could I tell if it's the same substance that was on the chair? Uh, you would have to get over the other side of the fence to see that. Okay. Is this a very sturdy fence that we're looking at here? Uh, it is... Pr it is Above uh, Chromagill. It's like a giant large fence. It's, it's very, like a pen. Very tall. All right. Chromagill is still unsure about causing property damage. <laughs> he's still nervous. So he's not going to break this fence down yet. <laughs> but oh. as soon as any sort of danger appears. Valtara is going to move on over to the crops to see if there's anything afoot over here. How high is this barrel stack? Like, uh, in comparison to the roof, would you say it's like half the size of the house, quarter the size? Like quarter the size. Okay, so... Making a jump off that, I might be able to make it to the roof or at the very least over that fence if I had to. Uh, if you have a running start and you're standing like right over here, you could possibly make it with an athletics check. All right. Well, I was thinking about if I jumped down there to check what was in the shed oh, and, oh, and yeah, all of a sudden, oh, fuck, I'm, out, I'm in out of my depth here and need to make a quick escape. I can right. jump off, jump up the barrels. and There is another well. Uh, there is a well next to the shed as well. Yeah, and I, what's I'm... next to the well also looks like 
a small little object, almost like a chicken coop. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, just hop down here real gingerly. Okay. And uh, see if I can find the spot where this, whatever it is, crashed out of the house. Uh, you see broken glass on the floor. It came from the second story, and there are scratch marks that go around the back of the house. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to do a nature check on these scratches on the... Uh, d you said it landed on the ground and went back to the shed, right? Yes. Okay, But so there's also a track that leads behind the house. All right, I'm just going to examine the tracks that lead A, behind the shed and be around the house to see if they might come from the same creature, or okay. if we're dealing with two separate entities here. Uh, that's a nature check of a 16. Yeah, 16. 16? Okay. Um, you've never seen these markings before. This is a creature that's completely out of your element because it's the first time you've ever heard of it before. But from the tracks, they have similar claw, mar uh, claw marks, but <laughs> that if on taking like a further inspection, one looks different from the other, but also like really similar, like in make. But it's just different enough for me to assume that they are. There are more different... than one creature. Okay, more than one creature. At the very least, they might be of the same race, but of different builds. They might be of a slightly different race. But yes. okay, looks like we're dealing with more than one thing here. Hmm. Could be two of the same thing. One just seems smaller than the other. I need to roll something for Valtara. If anyone who isn't our friend can hear this, I assure you, we mean you no harm, but Val we do know how to defend ourselves. Yeah, as you say that, you watch as this giant, almost hook-like blade pop out of the ground and pop Valtara in the chin. Hey, that looks... No, hey! And a spray of blood squirts up as she hits the floor. Wait, she's down? She's not down, but she took damage. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Got uh, a coup d'etat on her searching. As this arises from the, from the earth. One of those hooked oh, hey. reavers, I take it. It's the hook horror I was worried about, or whatever it was called. I Another one horror? pops out from the mouth. Arr. I think those are the things we've been looking for. Yeah. I'm assuming that this uh, fence is slatted and not solid. Uh, the fence? Yeah, there are like gaps between it. That no, I can... it's solid. Oh. What's going on over there is what I meant to say. <laughs> As one kind of like turns the corner. Oh, never mind. Think I know. We found some things. Me one, too. One crawls up from the hole on the roof. There's something behind me, isn't there? <laughs> and one last one. As it, oh wait, that's another Morgan. <laughs> and a second Morgan appears. I'm evil Morgan. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mergon. Yes. Mergon, <laughs> the magnificent. Mragon. Mragon, I like that. And this one turns the corner around the house. Roll initiative. I'm in a very, very bad spot. Uh, Damn it. Six. Eight. Uh, 17. Let me get my notepad out. I get plus three decks and I have roll fucking three, of course. <laughs> All right, so let's do that again. Six. Six. Eight. Seventeen. Six. Bryant. All right. Grant. Eight. Eight. And Nick. Seventeen. All right. Next up is Micha. Micha gets a thirteen. Altara, unfortunately, poor girl. She's at the bottom of the list because of the surprise attack. And Devil Grin. Damn it. <clears throat> Fuck me, Devil Grin gets a flat 20. Nice. Good for him. Quick question about this well I'm by. Yes. Uh, do I see liquid, like, kind of at around the ridge of the surface here, or does it look like it goes down? It goes down. Shit. Okay. Not a water escape route. Uh, right. I wasn't thinking escape route, but I do have several things that if I'm oh, in water, water makes it better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna roll. Well, 
if you like, you could investigate to see if there's water, but like, seems like a bad time to do so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Hook horror number one. I gotta get this list up because I have a lot of hook horrors to go through. <laughs> no worries. While we're getting this all set up, it's a great time to check out SharkRobot.com, where you can grab <laughs> lots of merchandise. If you go to SharkRobot.com slash Team-4 Star, you can get the official Natural Wonders shirt, along with many other goods and things that you can check out if you want to look at it. Look, there's lots of things. See, look, it's, it's in the card down there. Just look right there. That sounds Type right. merch for more info. Exclamation mark merch. I'm going to drink some of this goddamn tea. It doesn't work on YouTube, though, so if you want to type exclamation mark merch there, hey, thanks for the comment. If you see someone, leave a exclamation mark merch comment. Comment with your own exclamation mark merch. And give it a nice thumbs up. You know, YouTube, lo it. YouTube loves it when you interact with videos. Keep that lemming train a-going. All right, now let me... Uh, <laughs> Oh, good. My thumbs up shows up in every angle. Yep. Let me go ahead and add colors. <laughs> you can't to avoid it. Let me add colors to these guys so at least I know who's who. Yeah. So this is hook horror number one. This is hook horror number two. Numero dos. This is hook horror number three. This is hook horror number four. And this is hook horror number five. Gonna... All right. Uh, up the list first is Devil Grin. Devil Grin drops his form, returns back to the uh, tr his uh, actual form. Where did Sagrin go? Yeah, I can't see. <laughs> I can't. I can't see anything. Not a from question here. we should be asking. Donde esta? All right, Devil Grin is going to go ahead. And see that this guy over here is without an enemy to fight. He will. Uh, he can't take a stance yet. He can only take a stance as a bonus action at the end of his turn. Uh, so for now, he's just gonna go ahead and attack this boy with his katana. Just like runs over, pops the blade with his thumb, and then swipes the blade. And with a plus seven to his attack bonus, he absolutely cuts. Dealing. Six. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Dealing ten points of damage. And he gets a second attack. Nat 20s. By the Jesus. way, by the way, nice. uh, for one of his abilities, Solitude Strike which is uh, one of his subclasses for Code of Ronin, uh, it automatically makes any of your criticals 19 and 20. Mm. Nice. So if he rolled a 19, he would automatically crit. It's like a focus strike. Yep. Three, not, not a good one, but three, four, five, six, seven, plus the other one, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So he did 24 points of damage, and he will spend a <laughs> bonus action to which stance is he going to take? Out of all the stances he has, he's going to take... Do, 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 do. Ooh. He's going to take... Uh, no, he's actually up at the top of the list, so he's not actually going to do that. He has, he has a stance which allows him to gain plus five initiative. Jesus. For one turn, anyway. Say, it seems unnecessary if he's at the top of the yeah, list. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of like out of this thing here. He does have a shitty initiative roll. Uh, do, 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 do. He has Jinsoku, which is pretty rad. Jinsoku, here we go. Melee weapon attacks have an additional feet, five feet of reach. Hmm. Uh, so he will take Jingoku's stance as his bonus action, and that's his turn. All right. Who now? And now, it is two's turn. Hook horror two. Uh-oh. Oh no, they're fast. Mm-hmm. Figured since they were uh, scary bird creatures, they'd probably be pretty quick. Well, they were also big, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are technically large creatures. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm just trying to no, it is remember. All good. Oh, this is two, right next to Morgan. Yeah. 
Squirrel. 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 Uh, keen hearing, blah, 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 blah. Multi-attack, here we go. Oh, shit. Yep. Here Multi we go. Attack. You get, he gets two melee attacks, and they have a range, so technically he could have just stood right here and h hacked his fucking claw at you. Yeah, you watch as this giant bird creature, by the way, looks like this. Oh, my Christ. <laughs> Criminy. Oh. I'm trying to think where I've seen something like that before. It's it looks like a Godzilla monster. Gigan. Uh, yeah. Gigan. It's yeah. Gigan. Just needs a cyclopean laser eye. Yeah. So this Gigan looking motherfucker with what looks like it's a turtle shell almost, but then there's like a rib an extra rib cage that wraps around the actual body protruding out. Mm. He takes his claw and he snaps it together like a crab claw pincer. Yeah. That's the noise it makes when it goes to kill you. <laughs> oh boy, here I go you, kill it again. You have to go out of this world hearing that. <laughs> That's the last sound Morgan hears. <laughs> Sounds like it's bidding on something in Storage Wars. Does an 18 hit you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an 18 will hit him, I yeah. believe. An yes, 18 will hit. an 18 right. will hit me. So, on hit, this is a, oh geez, it's a 2d6 plus 4. Oh gee. Oh, max damage. I'm sorry. No, not max damage. You get four plus four, so that's eight on the first one. Okay. And now he's going to go for his second attack. So we got to kill these things quick six. is the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> uh, da, 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 four plus six, ten. That's not hitting you. Yeah, that's not Second hitting. claw misses. Okay, so that puts me at 36. And that's his turn. They don't have a lot of options for combat, but they hit hard. All right, Nick, you're up. All right. Uh, I look back towards my hood, and I yell, Scaffy! And I order Scaffy to go for the one in front of us's eyes. Gouge this sucker's eyes out! So that's me giving an order to Scaffy. Is that a free action? Um, Since I'm just yelling at Scaffy? You yelling at Scaffy will act as a free. Okay, cool. Cause I was going to say, I feel like we always treated it like a free action. It was treated as a free action, yes. But it was never used in combat, which is the fun part. Yeah. So Scaffy, I was, I was always too scared I'd lose him. Yeah, so Scaffy preps himself on my uh, shoulder as I run up to him, and uh, I am going to basically just take out my spear and start stabbing at this All right. ugly Gigan motherfucker. I'm just hearing the Samurai Jack whoosh sound effect as you just see it. Oh, uh, cool! <laughs> yeah, just... Uh, to hit, that is a 22. That will hit. All right. Stabity, stabity. You go right for the fleshy bit of his neck. You go for his jowls. And his jowls take uh, nine points of damage as I stab at them. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to hold off on using my melee attack as a bonus action, and I'm going to just go for my second attack real quick. All right. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. That will hit. Cool. And that is an additional seven points of damage. And for my bonus action, I'm going to burn a key point to use the, uh, to take dodge, basically. So anything attacking me has disadvantage. Okay, rad. And Scaffy, well, since he's acting on your turn, I will roll for him to see if he even hits. He's going to lunge himself at the hook horror. <laughs> the hook horror just slaps him away and he falls over shriveled. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a shot. And I'll be sure to grab you later, buddy. Well, <laughs> it's the first time we've tried to use Scaffy in battle, and you know, may maybe when you he get, I feel like we asked. He, maybe, rolled, he rolled a three. <laughs> you know, maybe when you get something at level four, <laughs> that's probably where it's scaled around. But still, <laughs> worth a shot. Micha, noticing how. Valtara just took a massive chunky hit. She's gonna head on over, use a heal kit, and heal her. Good. For all the damage that was taken. And she pulls out her own katana in self-defense, but doesn't but, but doesn't actually take uh, attack yet. Everybody's got katanas now. She's got a little katana. Unless I'm getting that wrong. What is uh me just thing is over there, yeah? Mitra, she has... 
A sling, a sap, and something called blood siphon, which I'm guessing is a spell. That's a spell. So it's the sap. I apologize. I looked. At, I'm looking at Devil Grin for some dumbass reason. It's all good. So yeah, she pulls she, out her sap in like fut shillelagh. futility. Yeah, she pulls out her sap in, in uh, futility, just like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plus four to hit with that sap if she needs to know that. Yep. She's like, oh boy, if this thing has 15 HP, you're gonna get such a wallop on the head. Because saps have this ability that if a creature has 15 HP or lower, uh, if, it's an, if it's a successful hit, it's automatically knocked out. And somehow uh, great clubs don't have that ability. <laughs> All right. Uh, it has to be acted as subdued damage. Yeah, though. yeah. Mm. That's the thing. It's like, that's lethal, not subdued damage. <laughs> uh, all right, hook horror four. So. That's a mouthful. Look, I, I, someone told me, you know you're going to fuck up one of, the, one of the things and say it's going to say hook horror four, yeah? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Whatever. I'm bracing for that. Hook horror. I mean, if we just think of it as a derogatory term for people who hunt them, ah, the damn hook horrors. Like, yeah, this works. You just sounded like you said Horker, and I'm just like, I'm reminded of Skyrim now. Horker. Just remember, you can never make any other build other than archer and fucking pick lo and lock picking. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, am, I, I always built Conjurer. Mm. I had every, I, I was like a Pokemon master. I just had everything else do my battling for me. All right, the guy in front of, uh, the one in front of Devil Grin is going to try and attack him. Uh, with a 17, that's hitting Devil Grin. Oh, boy. Double Grin takes nine points of damage on the first hit. And gets hit by two points on the second hit. Mm. For eight more points of damage to Devil Grin. Devil Grin doesn't seem all that phased. Like, he took, like, a nice slice across his chest. You see the scale mail fly with it. He just looks up at the thing, and the other side of his face grins. And the other side gets wider. <laughs> so, uh, Next up is Hokor 5. Which is... They should have stopped at 4. That anthology series is Garbo. I know, it sucks, right? The one in front of Meat... Oh, it's the one in front of Valtara. He looks, looks over at Mecha, and he's got the range for it. <laughs> He's gonna swipe at her. Oh yeah, it completely blindsides her across the face with its hook with its hook hand. Oh jeez. Max damage. Oh no. See ya, doc. 16, that's sixteen points of damage to meet ya. Oh jeez. Looks over to Valtara and uses his other hand to hit her. Misses. Valtara literally just <laughs> holds her arm up and halts the fucking thing's hand. <laughs> Beauty God. Grant, you're up. Uh, okay, sensing that there is danger on the other side of this fence, Chromagale breaks down this fence. <laughs> oh, that's right, you have that ability. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, is this something I'm de dealing damage to, or is this a check to break it? It's an athletics check to, break. Athletics to break. I mean, you could deal damage to break it, too. Well, it's my perk gives me either advantage on uh, on checks or double damage on structures. And so I was asking which one I would be going for, I guess. Either or, I guess. Either yeah. or works at this situation. Then less rolls will go. We'll strength check it then. It's going to be tough to be higher than that, but it still can. I'm going to miss that every time. Okay, that is, da, 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 you said athletics? Yep. Uh, 24. 24? Yeah, he just, he just fucking Kool-Aid mans through it. <laughs> this, this entire, okay, so this entire side falls over on top of the barrels. The barrels break, and this whole entire area is now drenched in the liquid. I hope Scaffy is okay. <laughs> Scaffy begins to bubble. Uh, my speed is 25. There is no way for Wake move. to notice that. Uh huh. I don't, I don't have a means to get up to the one on the roof, so it's I'm gonna. Shame help. Scaffy's yeah. not undead. Otherwise, I would be hearing it. I mean, Scaffy is undead. He's Scaffy an undead, undead hand. Oh God. <laughs> actually, do you hear uh, the uh, ghost attached to the hand? <laughs> that's actually. That's actually. I was thinking no, that. All you're hearing is just like. <laughs> oh yeah! Just knuckles cracking. Just 
Uh, okay, so now I'm on, I'm on this big boy. Uh, first of all, first thing I do is... Uh, oh, hey, Corona McGill. Hi, I'm here to help! I, I heard some cluttering back here. Yeah, there's a little. Uh, first I do... Where is it? Uh, Warden's Fire. Uh, this is a bonus action. Uh, choosing a creature that I can see, it now glows. That's the thing that's been dealing with, uh, that, that we've been fighting over here. All right. Uh, it, so. is now, it is now glowing. It can no longer hide, uh, from me at least. I, I'm the only one who can really see the glow. Um, but I gained advantage roll on attack rolls, uh, and it can't become invisible or any skill like that. Nice. Uh, cool. And so now I'm going to swing at it using my power, uh, using my big ass axe. Let's go ahead and roll this dice. I gotta clear a uh, a 15 or higher on an athletics check to even swing it properly. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, no, okay, cool, cool. I just make it. I my math was wrong. I thought I was one below. Okay. I just made it. Sweet. All right. So that's 15. Uh, so this thing's gonna get a lot of pain. Uh, <laughs> you have so, to roll to hit it. Though. Yeah, for, yeah, first to roll to hit, which I will get advantage on <laughs> since it is wreathed in my my warden fire. Uh, oh, I'm gonna stop rolling this onto dice. I'm going to assume that a twenty-two hits it. Absolutely. All right, sweet. So uh, if you weren't here for when I got this fucking monstrosity of a weapon, uh, it's damage, since I have to pass that test just to swing it, is 2d12. Uh, and with the effect of the fairy fire, that's going to add a d4. <laughs> so. Barbarian so, damage. So a fucking big axe is coming oh, for dude, this motherfucker. Oh, dude, it's like the fucking Shao Kahn fatality, <laughs> where the head gets shrunk in the neck. Oh, uh, croquet the skull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so just purely on the dice before any sort of bonuses are added, that's 17 damage. And then you <laughs> add your strength. <laughs> yeah, now we add strength, so that's going to add three to that. So that's 20. Uh, and then the, uh, oh wait, that was the D4 from the fairy fa fire. So that's 20 damage right there coming from this axe on that thing. That is a fucking outstanding hit. You actually hit <laughs> So it looks, it's like, kind of like rubs its neck like, oh, you hit me in the drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. This thing like kind of like lurches its net back up and then <laughs> must have hit it with a blunt end. <laughs> <laughs> Try to use it like a hammer. <laughs> yeah, just sideways with this axe. Crumbagill's never used an axe before. Fucking Elka bong him with the flat end. <laughs> Good pull. Uh next up, unless you have anything else you want to do. Uh hey motherfuckers. I have extra attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, since that was slashing, I have to roll something, right? That, that was slashing damage? Uh, it is slash, yes. Good, I have to roll something. Okay. You fucking splash the acidic goo that's on the floor that came from the flumps out of the keg. It seeps into the cut and deals six acid damage. Holy shit. Ow. Also, rather than, than do this, I'm going to, to backpedal on that extra attack because realizing I, I broke through that fence and attacked, I'm going to, I yeah. think those are my two actions, so I'm just going to do that. Yeah, that's it on I, that I, end. That might actually kind of be against the rules what I just did there, but I don't want to well, do that. Th think about that first one as one attack, and yeah. then you got your second attack after moving. That's how yeah. I would see it. Okay. I, I didn't know if when you initiated an attack, you needed to do both attacks there. or if you No, could... no, you can split it okay. up. You can All attack, right. move, attack. Well, now it's his turn. He's fucking pissed. But at which one? I was going to say. Pissed at both of you. He has two attacks. Oh, oh good. Let him. <laughs> uh, glad he's going to aim for share. Wake first. My chowls. <laughs> chowls. Disadvantage. With advantage? Disadvantage. Disadvantage, okay. Because I'm dodging. Uh, does a 21 hit. A disadvantage? Motherfucker, he had, he, yeah. He rolled, yeah a, he rolled a 19 and then got a 15. Yep, uh, 21 will hit me. Okay. So that is... Wake was overconfident. <laughs> That's 10 points of damage on the first swing. All right, there go my temporary hit points. And then he looks over to Chromagill. Uh, actually, hold on. After that attack, I initiate <laughs> Warden's Retribution uh, as a bonus action if a creature that you have... Uh, that you have wreathed attacks okay. one of your teammates, you may use Warden's Fury or Warden, Warden's Grasp. Was, uh, the re was the wreathing a... Uh, when you used your Reading warden's is the fire, bonus. is that, that was, your bonus action? That was a bonus action, yeah. You can't okay, so two. you can You can only do one bonus action at turn. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah you're gonna the, have to wait till next turn for that. The to never follow mind. the guide. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry, it wasn't my turn anymore, so I thought bonus. No, action. It's all good. 
But now he is going to attack you for your insolence. Okay. Come, come, come at me. Uh, does a 17 hit? Uh, a 17, yes. Alrighty. Oh boy. 14 points of damage. Whoo! Okie doke. I told you these things hit hard. They're not hard to hit. They are just giant mounds of flesh with a turtle back. Mom. And, Mom. and chicken faces. All right. Next up is number three, which I believe. Jeez, yep. I'm, so I'm at the bottom of the turn order, huh? Yep. So Real. this guy, this it was the guy coming out of the house. <laughs> so he sees all of this nonsense going on. It. My hope was to kill him before he got to us. That's why I swung so hard right away. Unfortunately, he is flanking. Oh no. That means he gets a plus two. Three. No, plus two, gotcha. Oh no. Well, he still has to try to hit me at disadvantage. Mm hmm. He's gonna try. All right. 16. Nat one. Yep, that's gonna miss me horribly. Gonna roll severity for that one. Whiff. Do you hear oh! something? <laughs> Wait, just ducks. Whoosh! <laughs> you, that's exa yeah, exactly how that happens. You duck and he hits his friend. Crap! <laughs> Fucking sideswipes his friend for not a lot of damage, though. For nine points of damage. So, number one's not looking too good. However, he is going to use his other claw to swipe at Chromagill. Ah, my stab wounds! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Man. All right, so six, does a 12 hit you? No, it does not. He misses. <laughs> That's his turn. Next up is Brian, you're up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to risk, risk the attack of opportunity. I'm gonna step back. Let's see, I'm gonna step back. Where's that damn measuring thingy? Um, I'm gonna move more. Shit. I'm gonna move Morgan um, over here. Go ahead and roll the uh, attack of opportunity. Uh, one, one quick, quick second. I'm just housekeeping something. Yeah. You can always disengage if you wanted to. Make you could. Sure yes. Hit you. Let me see. Dis disengage. It's, it's an action, but. <sighs> But what I have next isn't what I want to do next isn't actually. So That's you want to take the damage for it? Yeah. Okay. Right. He's gonna roll the hit. <laughs> Does a twelve hit you? No, thank Christ. It misses. All right, then I'm going to use Forsaken Chains on that thing and bump it up to five chains. Okay. And I have to concentrate for a minute, so that's it for me. Just yep. <gasps> there's nothing. There's now a bot. A B a bonded, bound, a yeah. bounded hook horror. Yep. It's just like. <laughs> I'm just kind of picturing that Morgan looks like a hero from Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. I love that. Valtara. What weapons do you have, girl? You know nothing about these monsters, so unfortunately you can't really use a lot of things. But you know what you will use? A whip. No, a ah. headbutt. Oh, that'll do. She's gonna get in there and try to push this fucker down. Yeah, okay. Nice uppercut, now it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking just like takes her horn and uppercuts the thing in the jaw. You hear the beat crack as she slams all three of her horns into this thing's face. Uh -huh. Four. It's funny, I was just watching dinosaur documentaries this morning. Mm, ba -ba -ba -ba, four, five, six, seven, eight. For seven points of piercing damage, she fucking breaks this thing's lower jaw. Oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, Thank you, Dino Mom. Yep, and Dino Mom's <laughs> gonna do one more thing as a bonus action. Dino Mom, oh fuck yeah. Dino Mom is fucking fed up with this shit. She could cast Dragon's Breath. You just watch as her horn lifts down, but it's not her, it's not her upper jaw, it's her lower jaw op uh, opens up. 
Sparks of lightning shoot out from her mouth as she looks down at this thing and fucking full blasts and cannon it. <laughs> She's going to use lightning dragon's breath. Nice. I mean, she rescued a blue dragon. That makes sense. Yep. yep. And... this. You, so what once was darkness through the fucking... Through Underhollum is just nothing but pure darkness, but for a split second... <laughs> A fucking beam of light uh. shoots out of this thing. Yeah, so everyone who's just like sunlight sensitive who was nearby. Ah, oh, fuck. You got a big solid wall and between Yeah, you're you fine. And, I guess and I'm true. too busy right now. Yeah, and Devil Grin's not facing it right now, so he's not seeing it. Only Meech is just like, ah. Mm. What the fuck is this damage, Valtara? It's lightning breath. Lightning breath is absurd. That's why you see a lot of blue dragonborn these days. 19 points of electric damage. Yep. <sighs> yep. This yep, thing yep. is still standing, but it's like... <laughs> Back up the list. Smoke. Devil Grin now has his stance at the ready. He watches, he just sits there with his hand on his... He's now just standing there with his hand on the blade itself. Pops it with his finger... Takes the blade and swings back down on top of the creature. <laughs> yep. For some reason, you got, like, whoever's watching, yeah, so basically Morgan, you watch as, like, out of nowhere, the blade somehow looked like it extended itself by wind. And, like, just this visible gust of air just became an extension of the blade and smacked down on top of it. Delvergren used air slash. Super effective. It fucking pa he passed with a plus six on top of that. Oh, Jesus, yeah. So Devil Grin's gonna go ahead and eight points of damage. We're gonna roll again for a second attack. That one just makes it by one point. Four, four. Eight, eight more points of damage. So 16 points of damage on Devil Grin. Mm. And he will remain his stance. He will remain that same stance. However, he will now activate let me double check something, because he's going to activate one of his... Trap cards? Mm, that's a good one. I like that. Uh, so he is currently in... Oh, my God. I apologize. This is one it of their abilities. Good, man. Do, do, do. Jingo... Oh, uh, yes. Jinsoku stance. Nice. Any creature... He's going to take a positive channel. Any creature you choose within 20 feet... And within 20 feet of you gains an... Uh, gains an increase to their speed by 10 feet until the beginning of your next turn. So, Morgan, guess what? You now can move an extra 10 feet for this turn. Next turn, anyway. Oh, at least up until his turn. Yeah. And he'll add that bonus to you. So that wind somehow just, like, gusts itself and you feel your feet become lighter. And with that, we are now up to this guy. The guy you chained. Yep. So I'm going to add chains onto him. The so. chains. The chains. Oh, you, get, you get back here, silly Billy. He's going to, he has 40 feet, so he's going to move 30. Yeah. 30 divided by five. That, so yeah, all five chains snap and hit him. Yep. So that's five D12s. Jesus. This thing just tore itself to pieces. It didn't know. <laughs> Just keeps walking. I, th I, every think, it, I think it would have known after like, <laughs> ow, that kind of, ow, what's happening? Ow, why? Well, I got three D12s right here. They just don't initiate until he's done moving, and once he stops, Nine, just, 12, <laughs> just ah! 16. All of a sudden, the, uh, that one saw trap. <laughs> or 16, that asshole boyfriend in Hellraiser. 23? 23. Yep, yep, that's 23 necrotic damage. You broke him down to bloody. You watch as like his entire chest cavity just caves in and explodes with blood. Again, I'm just picturing the the wires in the electric fence in Jurassic Park. Just... Yeah. But he's now in front of you. He is going to attack you. Does a 12 hit? Nope. Damn. He's going to take his other arm and swing out in anger because he's like, oh, fuck this, and he's going to accidentally try and swing over at Devil Grin. He has the reach for it. It's not going to get flank, and unfortunately, Devil Grin gets a nice hook to the back. Uh-oh. 
Devil Grin takes max damage. Ouch. Devil Grin is now at half HP. <clears throat> Next up. <clears throat> mm, 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 orange. So if that's the guy right in front of Devil Grin. Oh, wait, no, I apologize. That's Nick. Your turn. I am orange. All right. Um, this guy that uh, Chromagill and I have been beating up on, how, like, what he's sort of He's not doing good. Okay, he's not in good shape. He is cool. not in good shape. Uh, then I am going to initially stab at thee uh, with a 18 to hit. That will hit. All right. 18 to stab. Uh, do, 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 do. That is 11, 12 damage as I whoosh, run my trident into him. <laughs> See, he's still up? Yeah, he's still up. All right. I am going to you, follow up pull, with... As you pull your blade out, you take a kidney. <laughs> All right, I see he's at the uh, close to his limit, so I'm actually going to burn another key point to use a move that I haven't yet. Flurry of Blows uh, to do two additional melee attacks. Go for it. So I'm going to follow up by crescendoing, doing a nice crescent kick to the side of its neck. That is a uh, 18 to hit as well. That hits. Right. That is eight damage. Okay. Uh, still up? Yes. One more melee attack. That is a modified 20. Let so. me tell you the magic words. How do you want to end this? All right. So uh, I am essentially just going to kind of one-inch punch and reach in and rip out its heart. Excellent. Now that I know that its organs are accessible. Yep, you just so. reach in. <laughs> Kind of like pulling out that fuck it, like trying to reach into a vending machine through the bottom and getting a candy bar. Where, no, there, and, ah, there it is. Finish him. Done and done. And he flops over dead. And you actually watch as like <laughs> the splashing of the uh, the material that's around you guys. It let like it splashes around him, and in the open sores of the aftermath, it just starts to melt the chest cavity open. It is making him like bleed out. And I'm going to try to force feed the heart I have in my hand, uh, since I have one more attack in me, to his friend. I'm going to make that an unarmed attack. Uh, uh, basically, you know? Yeah, it's, it's unarmed. Yeah. I, I don't mind. I'm doing this for flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a... Oh, damn, 19 on the die. But uh, that's definitely going to hit. That's yep, a, and you no longer get flanking on this, uh, from this guy. Yeah, so I, I shove the heart like straight into its goddamn beak hole. What, what was the number again? Uh, I, I rolled a 19 on the die, oh, yeah, and yeah. I have a plus 7 to hit, yeah, so it's 26. Uh, max damage, 10 damage. Okay. Nice. Just, <laughs> just chewing on its buddy's heart. <laughs> Congratulations, you made the cannibal. But I also, yeah, I'm, I also basically just punched him right in the uvula when I did that as a delivery mechanism. <laughs> so it would throw up. Uh... Micha's turn. <clears throat> oh, Micha. Uh, let me get Micha's cheat sheet again real quick. There you Thank go. You. I'm not using it. Uh, I want to double check some spells on her. Oh, hell yeah. She's going to cast Bless on Valtara. Nice. Bless. Yep. She just, just, like, takes out. Uh, she, like, takes out the little Yeth symbol. Ra rah, sis boom ba. Go get him, and her hand her hand emanates purple, and like Valtar gets like this little aura around her. And all right, we are now up to purple. It's actually his turn. Uh, well, Micha is no longer in attack range, so he's gonna go straight on to Valtara. Hmm. Yep, that's hitting her. Very minimal damage, though. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Striking her again. Misses. Uh, that first swing, he uh, he grabs her, and he tried to clamp his uh, pincers down on her neck, and she just grabs both ends and rips it open. Oh, jeez. This thing tried to, like, try to strangle her. Oh, God, so a banana peeled its hand. Oh. Uh, and next up is Orange, which is in front of Devil Grin. Devil Grin 
uh, is gonna have to roll a strength saving throw as this thing is going to try and grapple him. Uh-oh. Uh, Devil Grin, what do you have? Well, this thing rolls a... Okay. And the hook horror has a plus four to that. Okay. So, 17. Devil Grin, you best get this save in. Nope. Devil Grin is picked up by both pincers by the throat and is being throttled in the air. Uh oh. Sitting over here with Chroma Gill. I wonder where everything's going on that side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, that plus that. Oh, boy, he's not looking too good. There is blood coming out of his mouth. Mm. This thing is pincering the inside of his throat. Uh-oh. He is uh, in the process of decapitation. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is Grant. All right. So big dude still right behind us, yep. or by me, I guess. Green guy is right behind you. Gotcha. He's choking on a heart right now. Well, that sounds like it's probably a little confused. Uh, first order of business. Um, <laughs> Bless you. Okay, so so one thing I noticed between last turn and now, not going to undo anything that happened. Turns out Warden's Retribution is a reaction, not a bonus action. Ah, okay. Ah. So, it's, so it's something I do immediately. Okay. However, As a reaction, yeah, yeah. However, I also found out Warden's Fury is only a part of that, so I can't just add that to my attacks. That is, ah, a, that is okay. part of that reaction. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I will I will not do that on this swing at all, um, but clearing that up now for any rules people who noticed my mistake. Uh, but okay. For, for this custom class that <laughs> very few people have probably actually read on. Very yep. possible. <laughs> but either way, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and swing on this guy with my big old axe. So first going to do the athletics check on that. If I get nine or higher on the die, I'm good. And I didn't. So I do not get to swing at him with this axe. The axe is still stuck in the other one. You, uh, you lift it up, and then your hand touches the metal part, and you feel the blade graze on you, and you just flinch. Just, ha! <laughs> now, does that take away my extra attack, or no? No. No? All right. Fucking swing again! <laughs> Got this thing to gamble. We're going to use it. Fuck you, die. Can you really give me a two and then a three? All right. Uh, also not... <laughs> Hitting him with this extra attack. Chromagill is scared. Yep, Chromagill is strict with fear <laughs> at this point. <laughs> no, no! Um, but I will use my bonus action to Warden's Fury this thing, just in case it attacks <laughs> Wake. All right. Or, or not Warden's Fury, or Warden's Fire, so it's wreathed. Yep, it is wreathed. Whoosh. Can't hide from me or get advantage attacks on me, but. Uh... All right, Red's turn. Red is dead. Green, it's Green's turn. He sees you, very hesitant with your axe. <laughs> uh oh. I guess I just fed him, so I'm considered friendly. Ten. <laughs> does ten hit me? Is yeah. that what you're asking? No, it does not. He uh, lurches his his uh, pincers down, and he's gonna cr like use both of them to slam on top of you, and you use your axe to parry it. <laughs> Going for a second attack. He tries again, and you parry it and push him away. <laughs> Stop it! No. No. Bad, frightening bird nightmare. Uh, it is now Brian's turn. Okay. <clears throat> you now look to the side as the, the Drakai is being held aloft in the air by two giant pincered claws. And his blood is actually splattering all over the place. It's safe to assume that loading a chromatic round of my pistol is a free action. I say you had it loaded this whole time. Okay. You put it in there. That's... Fine. So it's not a free action at that point. Though, okay, too. but it's already preloaded. Yeah. Okay. So I still have my. So I might do actually reloading. Okay. It will take an action. Yes. Yes. So what I'm gonna try and do first is smack the hook horror in, that that's facing me with the necro star. All right. Uh, does a twelve hit it? Unfortunately, no. It does not. It does not hit. Okay. Shit. Okay, then I'm going to take out my pistol and aim at the hook horror that's strangling our new friend. All right. With a chromatic round. Go for it. A 22 will hit, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and I was having trouble pulling up chromatic orb on here. Roll a 1d6. 1d6. And, and I got to choose, choose an element. 
Well, I, for these rounds, they were random. So uh, okay, so here. the D6 determines the element? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Four. Four? What's the damage type? That is electric. All right. Woogie, woogie, woogie. And damaging die, that would be just basically the pistol damage? Yep. Or Okay, so it's the one D6 plus three. So that's five damage. Okay. I get to roll for Devil Grin again and for this thing to see who breaks out. Okay. Because it had to be concentrating on that. All right, it didn't roll too good. It still has a strength bonus of plus four, so a 12. If Devil Grin can beat a 12, he can get out of this. He certainly can. Devil, uh, you shoot this thing, it throws its arm away, and Devil Grin uses the back end of his sword to pry it open, and he falls to the floor, uh, choking on his own breath. Okay. Those are my two actions. Now, what do I have for bonus actions? Give me just a second. Yeah. Let me just make sure something with the ectoplasm mechanic. I believe that is either an action or a bonus action. Where are you? Excuse me, cantrip, focus. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, and I guess uh, for my bonus action, I'm going to refill my spell slots. Okay. So that puts me down to two ectoplasm points. <clears throat> and... And... Will dis disengage count as a movement or... That counts as an action. Action? Okay, then I can't do that. So then that said, I just got to brace myself. All right. So that drops me down to four EP. And that's my turn. All right. Valtara sees that uh, poor Devil Grin's not looking too hot. So she's going to not face this creature. She's not going to move away. She's not going to uh, deal with purple as of right now, but she is going to turn to orange. And she's going to cast Magic Missile. All right. What the fuck is this damage? Yeah, I like the sound of that. So, Devil Grin <laughs> watches as this thing's about to go for a second pinch on top of him and grab his face. <laughs> Arms gone. Looks to the side as four, as three more bolts come in. Stomach gone. Chest gone. Head gone. <laughs> What is the that some, body falls over. Is that some max damage magic missile shit right fucking there? Shit, Holy yeah. shit. So orange is fucking dead. <laughs> Devil Grin just kind of like nods to her in gratitude, stands back up and looks over to the one that Morgan's fighting. Because he has that stance, it's going to be really fucking cool. Looks over to her, nods to her as the one behind her. It's just like, <laughs> preparing to slice her arms off. You did well. I'll bury you. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, next up is Devil Grin. Devil Grin's actually going to return the favor. He's going to activate a bonus stance to transform his stance into... Instead, the stance of joy. Your stance he's, becomes a pose. He's going this to change stance. his stance to Arashi, which means that a melee weapon attack that you make uh, is now considered a thrown 2060 property. When you make this attack, your weapon does not leave your hand. Instead, it creates a gust of cutting wind. Okay, so you're making an air slash. Yep. Ooh, air cutter. Pretty cool. That is pretty anime. I, dude, that's I, a, that's dude, I told you. I told you, Samurai the class, not Samurai the subclass. The subclass, yeah, whatever. This is the right kind of schlub that I know our fans <laughs> like. Yeah. Nat twenties. Fuck. Well, Jesus. that'll do something. Bird's just sitting there laughing at him. Rah, 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 rah. Chink. Rishi's the blade. Do we do? So I'm gonna have him do this instead. Dunk, dunk. Not one hand. Versatility damage. <laughs> no, it's too much. Both hands. Yep, he's gonna stand still and do both hands with critical critical damage. I love that that was uh, Ken Pachi's uh, from Bleach's secret technique. He didn't have a bankai; <laughs> he just used his other hand. Yep. <clears throat> oh wait. Bleach. 
So let me see what, let me let me see if he gets the second hit as well, so I could just have this all converge into one hit. Oh fuck yeah, it's another nat twenty. Not a nat Jesus. twenty. Jesus. It's a nineteen, and he gets crits on That's nineteen. Right. Okay, yeah, so he has it. He has. Yeah. He's got it. So he got two criticals. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So you were worried about this thing attacking Voltar from the back. I mean, I'm not. I can't see it. And you fucking watch as he just cuts the air. The air kind of stops, slowly splinters, and slides to the side. And then the middle where the convergence of the slide is... Just vi it just vivisected? It just vivisected this thing from the neck up. Its neck and two claws fly over. Purple is dead. Holy shit. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. No, that seems like a very balanced class. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that versatility shit, he kind of, like, made himself yeah. dumb stupid. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, if I was to keep any other character to move on to, like, to play a game with from this campaign, this I think dude. I just found it. <laughs> I think Devil Grin might be that guy. I think the class might need a little bit of balancing, but... <laughs> <laughs> nah, if it, was, if it was completely unbalanced, he wouldn't be able to... You, he would uh, be able to use a uh, either a positive or a negative channel on top of that, but that's a bonus skill. Right, right. So, funny enough, even with the damage he's doing, this is pretty it could on have been point. worse. This, this could have been dumb, stupid, broken. Plus, that thing was on death's door anyway. Uh, next up is... Do, 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 do. Blue's turn. All blue. <laughs> Points at Morgan with its Gigan claw. This thing clearly doesn't understand what it's Roll doing the two. now. He missed. <laughs> Boy blue. Google I just, <laughs> just sidestep away from them. At what point does self-preservation kick in for these fucking things? <laughs> no, we must protect the farm. Our home. <laughs> yeah, this is their <laughs> farm. Yeah, he actually does. Know. They broke our cleaning agents, Brock. <laughs> oh God, it's the pilot episode of Curse of Carly Dog. Oh they God, used, they used to be farmers. They actually, he actually does notice that uh, this doesn't look like a favorable battle for him. He's gonna try and run away. Opportunity attack for you. It does. <laughs> Morgan, it surrendered. Too bad. Uh, let me just check something here. Hmm. I've never eaten. Now, one, now when it's an opportunity attack, does it? Is it just a straight up weapon? Reaction, yeah, it's reaction, just one attack. Weapon. Reaction. Oh, fuck. I would have been so good to be like, nope. But fine. Uh, na, 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 na. I'm gonna just take a pop, shoot it with my pistol. You can't. Oh, melee. I can't melee. All right. Well, I rolled twelve and four. Sixteen does sixteen hit? Sure does. Pistol whip. I think that's like club damage, basically. Well, then, if that's the case, since I already have the necrostar in my hand. Yeah. Ah, so there you go. D8 and D4. That's a seven. All right. How do you want a flavor breaking this thing shell apart? Hmm. You know how most turtle shells have like that hexagon right in the center? Yep. It, I'm pretending it's like the whack-a-mole kind of thing. Just Do I get a prize? <laughs> and the Necrostar like applies necrotic damage on top of it so you actually feel this thing soul rip as you pull the thing out of it. I think you overdid it, Morgan. Well, that's your, I mean, that's your prize. You get its soul. You see a little counter on the Necrostar. Doop, doop. Just like, doop. thank you for playing. Uh, Enter Nick, your up. initials. All right. So, a with this S. <laughs> this dude right behind me here. Uh, oh, I'm you're just, facing him. Oh, yeah, I'm facing him now. Uh, I'm just going to stab at him real quick here. Just stabity, stabity. That's a... 24 to hit, that'll, <laughs> that that'll hit. do some stabities. Ah. Where'd my D8 go? I was just playing with both of them. There they are. That is uh, 13 damage. Oh, excuse me. All right. I stab it in here, and I will... You limp his arm. Follow up with an additional stabity, stabity. That is a 19 to hit. That will hit. These things Nine, only have an ten. AC of 15. Yeah. Uh, that is 10 damage with that stab. Okay. 
Uh, he's not looking too hot, but he's still standing. Well, I uh, will do my damnedest to finish this off with another flurry of blows. <gasps> as I go in for some nat 20. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, throw in a quick flurry of... Okay, so that's 12, 16 damage with my punch. Is that enough? No, he's still up. Okay. Holy shit. So that's 16 damage with the first one as I, like, shatter a bunch of its goddamn bones. Uh, the next attack, uh, that is a 17 to hit. That will hit. That is an additional 11 damage as I'm coming in with my... He's off by two points. God damn it. Okay, fine. Well, he's really close, but... Just to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Uh, that last one will be, I will burn an additional key point to uh, use Stunning Strike. So he has to make a constitution saving throw or else be stunned until Alrighty. my next turn. Here we go. <laughs> For seven. Yeah, no, he's up. <laughs> As my key channels through its body, it cannot move. Uh, <laughs> this thing is essentially helpless. Yep. Chromagill, you have another chance to lob it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's like office space with the printer. Just, uh, just, just for flavor, while Chromagill is winding up his execution, I'm just going to walk past him like, uh, uh, what's it called? The like Power Rangers style. As if I know what's about to come, and I'm going to pick Scaffy up out of the goop. Okay. Uh, let me just see something here. Uh, speech impaired attackers have advantage. So whatever you roll has advantage on this. Cool. Well, <laughs> bash it into paste. You know what? It seems like it's hurting pretty bad. I could execute it with this big ol' axe, but there is a real chance that I'll flinch by picking it up. So instead, I'm just gonna use the club I have. Yeah, I'm just gonna, like, pat Chromagill on the shoulder as I walk past, and this thing just going... <laughs> Remember, you have advantage. Oh, yes. Good thing, too. Stunned gives you advantage. Cool. Uh, does a 17 hit? That I absolutely it does. does. Flavor how you want to kill this thing. All right. Well, <laughs> Chromagill, uh, seeing this thing's despair as it's just being held there, rather than going for a real big swing, just kind of like goes down face to face with it and just kind of drops the club heavy <laughs> end onto it just for an instant smashing of its skull. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> I have destroyed that creature. <laughs> yep, and this is where we can actually stop. Hooray! All right. Um, I'm just going to say, Wake is going to try to harvest the fuck out of anything that these creatures oh, we can, have. We can worry guts, about that next time. That works for we, me. We have just, 60 seconds. He's, he's, carve, carve, carve. <laughs> he's putting it on the record in case next session begins, and we're like, all right, so we just killed a bunch of birds. We're walking down the path. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure, since these things are essentially sitting in a... Uh, we're, we're a, a solution <laughs> that is a solvent. I want to make sure that I claim that losing. before they are sitting there for minutes and all the shit gets oh, wrecked. Like I, don't don't worry. This uh, we're we're gonna return back to this scene when we get into the <laughs> game. Don't worry. Again. There's more Time stuff has here. stopped. Yeah. All right. But before we go, we, we got some art. Mm -hmm. We got some art to look at, and it's I'm like, excited because I, I saw a few of the ones that got retweeted. It's like the freeze frame cheer in '80s movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me uh, get on Twitter. Now that I understand how Warden's Retribution works better. Sentai is what I was thinking Sentai, of. Sentai, yeah. Sentai. The walking, walking away, him. yeah. Before, the, before they explode. I'm excited to use Warden's Retribution now. All right. Uh, start from seven going... Uh, start from now the top one going down, Tyler. So eight? Yes. <laughs> Hello, Wake! <laughs> from Some Delta Nitty shit there. From Delta Knight uh, 44, when Zito said... The wasted Chromagill was just shriveled. I couldn't help but think of that one moment from Ed Ed Nettie. Hi! I can see it. Hi, Wade. Chromagill would totally say buttered toast if that was a thing he knew about. Gravy! Gravy! Thank you so much. Next up. Oh. From Dusty the Pixel. He's Chroma so scared. Chromagill terrified as they lose themselves in the true fey realm. I don't... Oh, what's happening? I, I don't place. like this. I love this place. The universe. It's so beautiful. Should have sent a poet. <laughs> this is cute. Thank you so much. Adorable stuff. Oh, I also like the fact that his uh, his cap was the fucking uh, mushroom cap from Mario. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Next up, from Ooh. Unorthodox Ooh. Inc., a fairly new artist, by the way. Yeah, I as love a, the style. 
As a formerly pencil-only artist, last Tuesday's stream has finally comp uh, compelled me to start doing digital art. Nice. I just had to draw the literal colorful NPCs with particular smiles, our favorite blue blobby boy, Fetraeus, and the freaky devil grin. It looks so cool. <laughs> I love Fetraeus' eyes. Yeah. He's just so, doe eyes, like, oh boy. Though I, I love this too because, like, the way I had the Malo, it's just they actually have a real human face, and the stock, the eye stalks are like their ears, so it's like kind of like a rabbity kind of thing. But I don't mind that this is what they drew. Nah, I like fun. this a lot. This I is fun, and depiction. I love that. And Devil Grin, look at him. Hey, everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> have you looked at that way yet? <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Look over there. <laughs> up, oh, not much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, we got uh... a. <laughs> what happened? He's just being late. He's just moving the camera and uh, adjusting the camera so this getting a master shot. Okay. Everybody. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Next up, from De oh. Ooh. Ooh. oh, that's I, that's, horrifying. That's a carving right that's there. That's a carving. I actually. I guess I forgot to actually retweet that one because okay. I thought there was going to be another one up next. Let me see if I can find it real quick. That's really cool. No, uh, no, no, no. Don't go around it because that's, that's that's unfair. A, that's, a me... that's a Chroma Gill lantern yeah, right there. Shit, I love it. Yeah, no, awesome. it's really, really nice. And I wanted to make sure that this was on here. Let me uh, look at the latest real quick. Just watched over the garden wall and it reminds me of the beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Found it. From Kit. Get ready for these numbers. Kit 48041268. I've always been afraid to post any of my artwork online, ever, ever. But Looks by so scary, I understand. <laughs> but by God, I work too hard and long to let this just sit. I have Wake in the works and Morgan on the Ooh, drawing board, and I hope yeah. to finish them soon. I'm nice. excited. And by the way, there's no way I can fit both of these on the same time, but this is the lighted up ver This That's the lit up version. Here's the metal, just like straight light version. Oh, you can like just see oh, that. That's the, so cool. That looks wow. awesome. So, thank you so much. Yeah. These are rad. Oh, Dude, yeah. I would love to have a lantern like that. That that's, fucking kicks ass. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Next up. <laughs> hey! Here we go. From Dazzable, one, two, three, the day off for the crew. Uh, what you don't see is that Micha's been buried somewhere. <laughs> guys, get me out of here! Look, I put a castle on top of her. <laughs> guys, look how long I can hold my breath. Goes under for five hours. <laughs> I wonder gone. where Wake was. Suckers, I can breathe down here. They'll be timing me forever. <laughs> Where'd you guys go? You guys left. That wasn't cool. Then the fucking... And you didn't tell me. The bloaterfish is just sitting right there. Fuck. I've been here for eons. Luckily, Crumb... Another <laughs> kick! <laughs> Luckily, Crumb Miguel has SPF a thousand for hanging out on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome really stuff. Rad. I love it. And the sun hits my cap in such a beautiful way. From uh, Seto Sister, <laughs> wake eating and a fish like an apple. <laughs> I mean, not inaccurate. Just sh I like how sh I like how the inside of the fish almost looks like it is an apple core. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cutting just around the bone. Now, what you don't want are the fish seeds. Those are gross. <laughs> <laughs> They're like salty boba. Son of a bitch! Just, ugh, get that out of there. Cut around those. Oh, the God. fish core is easy. Yeah, the fish core. Fish core. That, that's the skeleton. <laughs> Some crazy you, you people eat around the it. fish core. <laughs> uh, there is a line art version and a sketch version, but I figured the colored version would be the one we wanted to see. Makes yeah. sense to me. I love it, Seto. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Hey. Oh. Hey. From uh, Count Morgula here. Holy shit. From Brent Adrian. Here's some Morgan. Tried to draw on paper first before it was colored with a tablet. I was surprised at how much faster it went than doing everything digitally. That's how it always goes, actually. Look yeah. at the fucking anger lines on that man's <laughs> that fucking brow. brow. The tool they use. That's to a man like, who has like three a, souls in him. Gives he, me like an airbrush That's like feel. three sets of furrowed brows, just all collected in one. That is the six pack of furrowed <laughs> brows. <laughs> He's flexing his anger. Yeah. That is so rad. Thank you so oh, much. That's the. The Akiro face. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the face he did. <laughs> that's the face he did. Except, you know, cross-eyed. But yeah, that's the face he makes when he holds something with Forsaken Chains. It's fucking rad. I Thank love you. It. Next up, I think uh, last, but, last but certainly not East from Zero Man Form Prime. Let me double check if I'm getting that right. Proto Zero Man. Ready, go now. To fucking where wishes yes. come true. Charging ahead, set your sights on that place. Smashing the feeling of odd deja vu. And the mirror reflected right back at me. Don't turn your eyes from the truth anymore. 
Fuck yeah, water bending awake there. Holy shit. Now this, that is a tattoo art. This fucking lad. Holy shit. Mm hmm. Uh, and un unfortunately, there's a lot more art that just came in now. Yeah. So, it, like, it, before we got started on the actual episode, unfortunately, I didn't get to see it all. So, there will be more art for next time. Yeah, I fucking love this. I retweeted this earlier. Yeah, I, that, that, that is awesome. Like, I'm not one for, like, tattoos. I, I don't think I would ever personally get one. I have way too much goddamn body hair. It just does not work out for me. But you, that you, is something that I would consider, like, somewhere on, like, the back of my calf or something. Do you mind if I be egotistical for one moment? Because I actually drew what Devil Grin looks like. Oh, go for it. Uh, then I will be right back. He oh, will man. be right back. So something I wanted to do with my when I realized what Warden's Retribution does is, uh, with Warden's Grasp, it's a melee spell, but... It has a range to it that isn't my range, which yeah. is what's been confusing me because I've been okay. avoiding using it, thinking that it was a I had to hit him with my like weapon to trigger it. But what it is is within sixty foot of the thing that I've wreathed, I pick a point within ten feet of it, vine shoot out of there and just oh. hit him and pull him to oh, it. Oh shit! Uh, so when we spilled all of that solvent and we had cut open that one thing, I was like, I'm gonna make its pull point there and just drag it into this acidic stuff with all these wounds. Yeah, I didn't know how much HP these things had. I thought, like, uh, I figured once we were dealing with five of them, can't be that high. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. 75. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are level seven. I was about to say, yeah, we're, we are level seven. Oh, yeah. I, 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 trust me, I, I, I can, on a good round, I can do upwards of, like, 30 or 40 <laughs> damage. I, I understand the need for having higher HP. That's true. Pretty psyched if I was, damage if I was on that somehow swing. lucky to roll max damage on Forsaken Chains, that's sixty necrotic damage. Oh shit, that's that's our boy. Yep. That's basically the idea of what Devil Grin looks like. It's without the armor, though. <laughs> that's my current <laughs> Sifu. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I guess, I guess he studies a other Eastern art, so I guess he goes by Sensei. But well, to be fair, he did tell you like, hey, I wasn't originally from there, but I learned the ways of the blade. <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> I still. While you were out choking up, <laughs> I studied the ways of the blade. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. That is awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for the wonderful art. Also, good stuff here. I, lo I love this. Uh, it was th This was you that did this, right, yeah, Zito? I did this yeah. One. Yeah. So good, uh, good on you on this one, Zito. Thank you. Uh, we'll have to figure out a little bit more about our boy Devil Grin next time at the table. Thank you so much for joining us here, Wonders. Camera's over that way. I'm used to looking at that one for outros, but it's cool. So I'll see you. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.